All right. Um, good evening. We're going to see that we have a quorum of town council members present. I call the second, third meeting of the town council to order at 629. Welcome all. This meeting is being broadcast live and being recorded by Amherst Media. Copies of the agenda are in the back of the room. And if at any point you like to, sp they're not. Okay. We'll make sure they are in the future. Thank you. Um, we will be showing the agenda on the screen in a minute. Thank you. Are there any announcements by either members of the council or the town manager at this time? Councillor Haneke. I just thought I'd make an announcement that the town council rules and procedure committee will be holding its first meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the Bang Center. I'm sorry, at the Bang Center? At the Bang Center. Okay. Yes. All right. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Um, there are no resolutions and proclamations at this time, so we're going to move on to public comment. How many people are here to do to um, make public comment? Okay. Uh, and we are going to actually now start by asking people who make public comment to sign in. This helps us come back and uh, get in touch with you if we need to clarify a point. If you'll come forward to the mic, make sure you press the button so that it works. I sit or please. Okay. And you do have to continue to hold the button down. Oh. Well, I. It's. It looks green. That's Can fine. You? That's excellent. Okay. Ready? Hello, everybody. I'm Carol Johnson. I'm the director of the Amherst Cinema. I've met many of you and hope to know all of you. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the cinema and to make a fervent plea. You should have in your packet a two-page letter from me and with a map attached. Um, I think many of you know we are an independent nonprofit. Uh, we have a four-screen theater located in downtown Amherst that's been operating since uh, Thanksgiving 2006. We now show about 275 different programs a year in over 20 languages. Our main focus is first run film, but we also do a lot of other um, special events, film series, filmmakers visits, collaborations with nonprofits. We have an education program for school children we do a lot of things. We sell about uh, 115,000 tickets a year. That's an average of 2,200 a week. And um, I want to assure you that all of our programming decisions are made in Amherst uh, by people who love film. Um, we're not governed by a national organization. We're totally independent and make all of our decisions here. We are a regional arts organization and that's really the point of the map. If you take a look at it, what you'll see is a lot of blue dots. Those dots represent our members who, as you can tell from the map, come from a lot of places. Um, and the main point I wanna make tonight is that they're mostly driving here. If you're coming from Petersham or Worthington or Leiden or Windsor, Connecticut, you're driving. Um, most of our audience members do not walk. They don't ride their bicycles. They don't even take public transportation, although we are very accessible um, via all those means. And surprisingly, um, our 
um, audience members do not consist of a huge number of students. Our busiest times are January, February, over the holidays and into the first part of the year and the summer, and we do a lot of special events in the fall and the spring. We're attracting people from at least 25 miles away, and we have people telling us that they're coming from very, very far away. So the, the main point I would like to make is that parking, that the P word, is really important to us. And when we hear comments from patrons, whether they're coming from Chicopee or Amherst or wherever, the main complaint we have is about parking. So my fervent plea to you is, as you plan the future of our fair town, if you would please do two things. One is preserve as many parking spaces as possible. And the other is think about the long-term vitality of our town and what really makes it a vital place. Even in this era of self-driving cars, perhaps, <laughs> those cars, once they drop you off, are gonna need a place to go. And what makes a place a really <coughs> vibrant community is having people there walking around. And we would love to be a part of a continued vibrant downtown in Amherst. So if you would, uh, look to preserve as many parking spaces as possible on our streets, in our lots, uh, in the North Common, um, every place that you can think of. And think about a vision for Amherst that provides many more parking spaces than we have now. We love our downtown and we really want to be a part of it. I would be really happy to take questions if you have any now or that's not permitted. Um, if you don't have time for that, I am very happy to have uh, coffee or lunch or whatever with any of you. So uh, my contact information is on the letter. Uh, I'd be really happy to meet with you. Thank you for Thank your you. comments. All right. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak at this time? Um, the next item on the agenda is hearings. We have none scheduled tonight, so we're going to proceed on to presentations and discussions, but actually on to action items. Um, though there'll be a discussion throughout these action items, uh, we want to make sure that um, the people have plenty of time to look at them. So the first one is is looking at the proposed standing committees of the council. And in your packet, I distributed the following comments. Um, I've included both the list of committees and on a separate attachment, attempted to include all the relevant references to the charter pertaining to that committee. I'm not going to suggest I didn't miss one. I certainly might have. Um, the words in the charges are now aligned with the language of the charter although there clearly will be additions that are not referenced in the charter. There are obviously overlaps in the work of some committees. For example, both the Finance Committee and the Community Development Committee will have a strong interest in capital inventory and capital improvement programs, but they will be expected to co communicate and collaborate. However, I have proposed assigning discrete items to each committee. That doesn't mean that's the only committee that will ever address any of that. It just means that at least we know where its basic home is. And finally, no committee structure is without its flaws. However, after our discussion and amendments, I hope we will move forward on these knowing that they may change in the future. If we look at other town councils and other city councils, they restructure sometimes as much as every year. So I'm going to start by asking for a motion to adopt the four proposed standing committees and a second, and then we will move into some editorial changes which do not require a motion, but then there are a couple others that I'm aware of as well. May I have a motion? I, 
I just have a question. If, if we want to consider each separately <coughs> rather than as a set, I don't know how I make a motion. Uh, um, you would move to take the item, the, each committee as uh, individually. And if you'd like to do that, that's fine. Yes, Councilor. I'm yeah, no, I don't. Um, Go ahead. Would this, is this the appropriate time for a motion or would it be after discussion? We have to have a motion since it's on the agenda as action and then we have discussion after we've had the motion. So in order to proceed with a motion, with the discussion, we have to have a motion on the floor. Yes, Councilor Brewer. So without having rules that state that, I actually mm -hmm. think we have some flexibility there in okay. terms of the only reason I would say that is if it was a very cut and dried, yes, of course we're gonna do this, then motion, boom, one comment, okay. boom, vote, easy. But when names of committees might get changed in addition to the content of the committee based mm -hmm. on our discussion tonight, even though it sounds like you don't wanna have a huge discussion about that, no, that's fine. Um, it might make more sense so that then it, kind of at the end of the discussion, we can say somebody moves it as amended and okay. then you're not having to have numerous okay. conversations about altering the original motion. So in the absence of more defined rules, <laughs> um, since Councilor Brewer is one of the people on the rules committee, um, the uh, let's move this then as it is in a presentation and discussion. And so at this point, we're not entertaining a motion. So. It's, the floor is open for discussion. May I suggest a couple of changes that have to be made um, in order to have this read more accurately? In the Finance Committee, in item 3A, it should read one, in parentheses, one counselor, not have an S. In item B, it should say no more than two counselors add an S. And in item C, no more than two counselors add an S. Yes. I was just gonna suggest that maybe we take each section at a time so that our conversation doesn't split, it, since we don't have a motion, so that we're not jumping okay. between potential committees. So at this point, given that, and the suggestion was made over here as well, uh, let's just stick to the Finance Committee. Comments, questions, discussion? Yes, Councilor Haneke. I have one other um, Scrivener type comment, <laughs> and that is in the 3A section, the charter actually calls it the Participatory Budgeting Commission, not Budget Commission. Thank you. Okay. It called it the participatory budget, the budget coordinating group. Just, budgeting. Just participatory budgeting commission instead of budget, the word budgeting with an ING. Okay. Um. Yes. Councilor Pam. Um, well, I see the um, comment that you wrote about um, the uh, capital inventory and capital improvement program and infrastructure uh, being something that will be debated and discussed by several committees. Um, so I am suggesting that it be, that it stay in the Community Development and Sustain Sustainability Committee where you had it last week uh, so that we could discuss things in a policy way and we could uh, suggest things and deal with that, that of course it would also be in the Finance Committee because the Finance Committee would be dealing with questions of how do you pay for it and I think both committees would be concerned with prioritization but from different angles. So my suggestion is that it be in both committees. I'm sorry, Ms. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. excuse me. I, I have a cold so please yeah. go ahead. So if I, if I may ask, could you tell me us exactly which, what that was again? Okay. Um, well, when we originally got the committee, uh, the description of community development and sustainability committee, um, it um, had the words 
Let's see, well, I can't find I use the word capital assets and infrastructure. Right, we're in that committee uh, connect with other questions of land use. And um, then at our last meeting, a suggestion was made that maybe that really belonged in the finance committee. And I think we can agree that uh, aspects of capital um, assets and infrastructure really belong in both committees uh, to be discussed as a policy matter in the Community Development Sustainability Committee. Uh, and then, of course, looked at as a major item in the Finance Committee. Um, sustainability has different meanings in different contexts. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the Finance Committee would be looking at that perhaps and what it costs to keep the building running, um, as well as its energy costs overall. But I, I do think it would be a mistake not to have it in the Community Development Sustainability Committee um, for discussion in a policy way. I'm sorry, Councilor Sheen. I have a comment um, on the substance of what's in finance right now. I like the way it's drafted very much, and my comment is interactive with the Joint Capital Planning Committee. So in 3B, it says no more than two counselors of this committee, and I would like to make it two counselors would, um, so two of them go on, but it, it's interactive with when we get to discussion of Joint Capital Planning Committee, and Alyssa and Councilman, Councilwoman, or Councilor Brewer and, and Steinberg can um, correct me on this, but the Joint Capital Planning Committee used to have two select board and two from finance, and I think a structure there that had two from town council who weren't on finance and two who were on finance would give us a robust group on the overall town council thinking about our capital needs and pipelines. So the only suggestion I'm making here is that we say two counselors from finance would go on it. But that's because later I want to suggest that there are four people, two from finance and two from town council on the joint capital planning. So it's interactive with that, um, which isn't a standing committee. It's a, of the council. Okay. I I'd like to actually go back to Councillor Pam's uh, suggestion that the capital inventory and capital improvement program appear in both the finance and the community development and stick with that and then we'll come back to yours. Okay. Councillor Ross? Just a point of order, I think right now we're just talking about the finance, finance. committee. Right. So perhaps we should limit the conversation to finance committee and move on to community development next. That's fine. So in other words, at this point, the question would be, do we leave it in finance? Okay. So then I want to go back to the other question that has been brought forward. Again, it may relate to more than just this committee, though, and that is that they're on the joint capital planning committee. There would be both two people from finance and two other counselors as well. That's the, in essence, Councillor Shane, right? Yeah, and it, the change here would be instead of it saying up to two, it would just say two. So I am trying to focus just on finance, but explaining that reasoning that later when we discuss this other one, okay. it wouldn't be just the finance people being on it, it would be two other counselors. Okay. It does seem that you would also strike the not more than two on the next line as well in C and just say two counselors. Uh, if you want me to react on that one, actually the drafted draft version of the joint of the budget coordinating committee doesn't have a number of members at all. So, I mean, we could when we get up to that, is it okay. just fine? You know, so I, that one I had a less strong recommendation because it had no members, no count of people. <laughs> okay. The, in this particular case, however, am I correct on this, Councillor Haneke, that the charter does require that there be two counselors? The charter. On the participatory <coughs> budget. budget. No, the charter requires one counselor on the participatory participatory budgeting commission. The charter okay. has no indication as to how the town council will fill the JCPC and budget coordinating group slots that we might decide the council has. So originally this read at least one counselor. 
Councillor Steinberg. I, the reason I'm hesitant to have too many people from the council on Joint Capital Planning Committee and um, also uh, are cautious about taking the lesson of the past and applying it to the future is a couple things. One is the Finance Committee was a, um, in its prior rendition, was a committee of the town meeting appointed by the town moderator for the purpose of advising town meeting on budget issues. And the select board was the executive in our um, government, and so the, in the executive was, being re was what the representation from the select board was. Uh, the purpose of the committee uh, is to advise on, and to review the budget proposals from the various groups that present um, their various capital and um, needs. And um, there needs to be a sense of fairness um, in the, um, so, so it really amounted to two things that I think that we as a council need to think about in responding on this issue. One is to remember that um, this is a committee that's gonna be reporting back to us. And the final decision on the capital budget um, is gonna be determined by the council so having a um, committee that's advisory to us that has what might appear to some to be an imbalance of council members um, could um, make people representing the schools and the libraries feel that they're being overwhelmed from the start within the process. And uh, it is important that the library representatives from the trustees and the school representatives from the school <coughs> committee feel that they have an equal chance to present and have their capital needs considered. Are there further comments on the discussion with regard to the number of counselors that would be on JCPC? Are, at this point, we can just leave it that it's two from finance and then go on to the other committees. Councillor Haneke. So if we're not sure we're going to change the number of counselors on JCPC, I, at this point, if that might remain two, I'm hesitant to say they both have to come from JCPC in a sense, because of what Councillor Shane said, of it might be good to have a counselor that's not on finance on JCPC to have a different view. So if we would, if we don't end up enlarging the JCPC council representation, then I, I don't want both of them to have to come from finance. So I would be against changing the wording at this point. Okay. Other comments on finance? Yes, Councillor Steinberg. Uh, just so you're aware, there was one other issue that I raised um, and um, I asked our um, clerk to inv um, check into the matter and apparently there's at this point still not um, an answer to the question and that is whether the um, members of the finance committee who are not from the council um, need to be considered for special municipal employee status or not because of their non-voting status. And as I understand it, um, the, the clerk has made inquiry with the Ethics Commission Council and that there's not an answer yet, but uh, she could answer that better. I just wanted to alert the council to that issue that I identified. So if we find out later that they need to be uh, SMEs are special, special municipal employees. We'll have to come back and amend that. Okay. We're still on finance. Councillor Haneke. So I just read the sentence for number three again. Should we actually indicate that the residents are non-voting members in that sentence? So the committee shall assist of five 
consist of five counselors as voting members, and right now it says, and four residents. Should we add the phrase, as non-voting mm -hmm. members? I mean, the charter covers it, but it would be clear then here, too. Got it. Are there other comments or discussion on finance? Let me tell you where I think we are, and I want to check. We're not asking for a vote. We're just checking on this before we move on. So in the um, item in finance committee number two, at the end of the sentence where it says uh, four residents, it would say four residents as non-voting members, period. Okay. On item 3A, we have struck the S at the end of counselors. So it says one counselor. On item B, at this point, we are leaving it open because we're going to come back to it. Um, and on item C, I believe it should read at least one counselor from this committee will represent the council on the participatory budgeting commission. You said, Councillor Haneke, you said that. So section C is the budget coordinating group. Section A is participatory budgeting, Thank which you. also needs to add the title change. Thank you. Thank you. I misunderstood that. Thank you. So A is where we eliminate. It's one counselor, and it says participatory budgeting commission. And on item C, um, it, uh, I'm sorry, does the charter require two people no. on, no, on the budgeting, budget coordinating group? No. So the question really before the council is, should it be at least one or should we say two? Thoughts? I actually think it's fine as written. I think it's fine as written. No, no more can... than two. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Community Development and Sustainability Committee. This we're just in discussion at this point. Uh, so far, the only comment I have heard that carries over from the previous conversation is that this committee should also have a role to play in capital inventory and capital improvement program. Councilor Brewer. I realized that we went around in some, I wouldn't say circles, but we had some extensive discussion about what was then called the Planning and Economic Development Committee. It's now referred to as Community Development and Sustainability Committee, and I think it's a mistake. I don't think we should use the words community development at all, and there's a reason for that. I'm hoping that someone would explain maybe what it meant, and therefore we can come up with an alternative. We have a community development block grant advisory committee. We cannot possibly have another committee called community development. I suppose we could change the block grant community development block grant advisory committee to block grant advisory or something, but pretty much across the state, they refer to it as community Community okay. Development Block Grant Advisory. So without getting into that whole situation, I wonder, I appreciate the sustainability being brought into the title because I know we talked about that at length, but I wonder if either we want to include the master plan reference in there as, as part of the whole umbrella for the whole thing and that could substitute for the concept of community development, which is also mentioned in item one when it says economic and community development, and I'm just until someone explains what community development means in this context, I guess I'd like those words dropped. So do you have a specific title you would like to see on this committee? I'm pretty sure Mr. Schreiber is going to come up with one <laughs> based right. on the look on Councilor his face. Schreiber. Yeah. Actually, I had the, uh, if I may? Please. Yeah. Okay. So, I did call on you. I mean, I think you're, that's a good, I think community development is a term of art that I don't think community development block grants own that. It's like... But um, really my comment was going to be that I don't think sustainability should be separated as a, it should all be sustainable. So if we're gonna put the word sustainability in there, I would support something like sustainable community development or 
Uh, no, now you have my wheel spinning, but development and conservation also works. Sustainable development and conservation, because it's not all about developing, it's also about conserving. Councillor Pam. Um, I, I have to admit, I got a little confused with that. Um, are you saying that the committee should not say, as is in set one, number one, advise the town council on all matters relating to planning, zoning, and land use? Um, I understand you want more explanation on economic and community development, um, but did you take out planning, zoning, and land use? No. No, I've not, I have not heard anybody taking that out. Yeah. So, so could you restate what you said? I, I did get confused. Council. Okay. Sorry. Yes. I oh, I was only talking about the title. I wasn't talking about the functions. I, I was suggesting something like sustainable, excuse me, sustainable development and conservation. So nothing about the um, actual, we're, I was still at the bold letters. So the two issues on this particular committee that seem to be on the table is they are um, the title itself and the second is the issue of adding in capital inventory and capital improvement program. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor um, Balmel. Um, I was just wondering as we are creating and organizing these committees, if we have a strategic vision as a council and if the committees should be organized around the goals that we have in pushing that in and we talked a little bit about maybe the master plan being that document that lays out the priorities for that and so i took a look at the master plan right now and it does have certain goals, certain goals like uh, which are part of the economic development which include university relations which councillor shane had recommended last time including uh, making that part of uh, our sustainability and economic development committee. Um, there is um, housing, um, uh, transportation, uh, services and facilities, maintaining the quality of services in our town, um, open space and recreation. So there is like, you know, all these different categories and I wonder if those become part of this economic development and sustainability committee. Okay. The, at the last meeting, it was suggested that we just call this master plan. Uh, it did seem to, uh, again, be directly identified with the existing master plan. Um, I did include review proposed master plan updates as item two, as a way of trying to encompass all of that. Uh, but it, we can certainly be more specific. Yes, Councillor Dumont. Um, I also, I, I would like to repeat my concern that I mentioned the last time uh, at our last meeting. Um, number one, advise the town council on all matters related to this list of topics. Um, I would, I can see number two, I have more trouble with number one because it again it feels like an additional hoop that matters would need to get through in order to get to the full council. Um, I could see it as possibly um, an entity that could carry out tasks that were given to it by the council uh, to research a particular issue and come back to us or something like that but I don't like it as written because it feels like a barrier mm -hmm. um, more than a, um, something that will uh, assist the council. Okay, comments? Councilor Shane. Um, I wanna second that thought because I also started to look as since we're on the rules and procedures of uh, the council and so in starting to look at other towns, they all have these committees. And what I've seen is the language is often, um, rather than advice, it's the place the town council refers things to 
you know, this is, we need a special study here. There's a set of issues we need to address. So its origin is the council down to the committee, and then the committee is reporting back with recommendations rather than flowing up from the committee. And mm -hmm. I like that, that structure. So if we, you know, I can imagine a PBTA, a, a bus route change that's coming to us and we want to think about it, we can refer it to this committee to figure out what we should do about it or licensing fees. I don't, you know, but to, it's reversing the authority coming from the council back down to the committees, so. So it's an issue of I mean, in order for the committee to deal with this, the council would need to assign something to it, and they, in turn, the committee would come back and advise. Okay. Um, I'm mm. open to a word change. Um, upon referral, yes, Councillor Stryber. Well, one step would be to remove the word all. So just advise the town council on matters, because all really implies Okay. Other? Um, yes, Councillor yeah. um, Haneke first. So like Councillor Dumont, I've been struggling with what the, this committee specifically would do to help the town council. Because I don't, I, I guess with this wording, are the, is this the committee that's sort of investigating bylaw changes that relate to everything listed, which is probably going to be nearly every bylaw change, whereas I see that better sitting in the Legislative Matters Committee. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> and with the review, the proposed master plan updates, um, my, my comment was what does this actually mean, updates that come to it from the planning board under the charter 9.8 F review or 9.8 G, um, are they looking at the master plan to make updates that would then get referred to the planning board? I guess I'm still not quite really comprehending exactly what this committee would do versus some of the other committees that we're proposing. So just, although this is taking this out of order, if you look at the sheet that you were given this in your folder with the changes. Uh, under Governance Organization and Legislation Committee, we've added a number two, and it says review proposed bylaw changes and additions for form, content, organiz and organization to assure that bylaws are clear and concise with the town code. The word town code is just a, a used term at this point. It's, it's the town bylaws. Um, but the, again, you go back to these committees, there's often inter interlocking things, and there's no way you're going to avoid that interlocking. In fact, in some towns uh, that I have read, everything that is done goes back through the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. Um, it's, and in this case, what I've tried to do is at least only make those things that would be uh, changes in bylaws. <coughs> so the issue, going back to your question, Councillor Haneke, is I would see the, for the moment we're calling it Development and Sustainability Committee, dealing with the substance, the coordination, trying to help to bring together a collaborative looking plan, obviously much of it vested in the master plan, but if there's actually then bylaw changes, they would have to go to the bylaw, to the Governance Committee. Councillor Haneke. So that sounds to me like you see it as a potential policy recommending committee. Is, is that what I'm hearing from you? It, that, it could that, be. Yeah. That they would be looking, this committee would be looking at policies that the council might adopt? It could, certainly. If, if it's going to look at um, master plan, at some point it's going to look at policies and then bylaws. Councillor Bowman. It's more of a question than a response to Councillor Haneke's question and the questions brought up here about the relevance of this committee that um, 
what I, what many of us heard in our campaigns was the the problems that um, local doctors, professionals, um, local businesses encountered um, as businesses, and uh, what were, what are some of the challenges? So I think we do need a folk. Oops. We do need a focus, uh, a, a committee focused on looking at some of the issues that our local businesses, professionals, uh, startups encounter, and and also to ensure that this is in alignment with our vision of the character of Amherst and all of the other things that we heard. So having a committee to really focus in on collecting that information, um, doing the research and reporting back to the Big Town Council. So that's your observation about this committee? Councilor Bowman. Yes, I yes. think it's, okay. it's an important right. role this committee can play. Yeah. Councilor Brewer. I don't disagree that that is an important thing for the council to talk about. I don't think this committee needs to exist. I think this committee can exist at some point in the future when we figure out what the things are that we need to assign to it, like that idea, like the master plan. But it's a mistake to assign ourselves to something that we don't actually have anything to refer to it yet. We have other bodies that actually need to get going, like Finance Committee, JCPC, Rules of Procedure, et cetera. And as long as I feel confident that someone's bringing us some form of sustainability committee before too long so that we don't lose sight of that, I'm really uncomfortable with creating a structure that is just there because other communities have it and we think we might want it someday, but it's not actually directly related to what Mitch Spallmill necessarily said, whereas we might very well want to work on that particular issue much sooner than this committee actually is just like the kitchen sink committee at this point, and I'm really uncomfortable with that particularly if we're going to, you know, if we are going to have it, we definitely need to not just say on matters. It needs to be on matters referred to it, which might, for example, include these various things, but I, I just don't see why we need it at all at this point. I can see us needing it a few months from now. Councilor Schreiber. So I'm going to plus one that comment, which is it may be premature for this, that I, I'd rather see what the workflow is and we can... You know, as you know, we can add standing committees at any time or ad hoc committees at any time. But most importantly, I don't think we want to undermine or cancel out the work done by the other town boards, committees, commissions, whatever they're called, of which there are dozens, all many of whom are actually looking at some of the issues that have been discussed here. So, you know, we know that the planning boards purview is, you know, they're the keepers of the master plan, and the master plan updates could be initiated by them with our participation, but we don't, we really don't want to undermine, we want to support and encourage all of the work that's done by all of the other committees in town and maybe add other committees or reorganize those. Other comments? Councilor DeAngelis. Um, I'm feeling differently. Um, I feel like this is an opportunity for us to slow down um, some of the committee work that's being done um, or decisions that are made independently by committees um, that have a huge impact on the community. Um, and so I see this uh, group as being um, in-depth researchers on particular topics. So if we're going to look at... Um, uh, inclusionary zoning, that we have, we really investigate that. If we're going to change the master plan, we need to work together on what the definitions are, how we're going to apply them. And I feel like each committee in town works independently and everybody's sort of saying, oh, it's not the design review point per, uh, team that's gotten in the way, it's planning board didn't listen. I want to end that by having some way of looking at things holistically, which we don't do in Amherst. Councilor Pam. I, I totally support what you say. Um, during the campaign, we heard from so many people a sense of confusion as to the direction that things were going. And we're at an interesting time when we are moving ahead and there's uh, progress in the 21st century, and we have uh, plans and changes that are happening, but we need to have a, some place where we can sit and talk about it 
to look at the whole and to think about where, what needs to be forwarded and what needs to be perhaps slowed down or rethought so that we have a stronger sense of where we are and where we're going. Other comments? Councillor Haneke. I think you guys, the two of you are both right that we need to have a committee that looks holistically at something. Maybe as the council has some proposal in front of it, it might be good to then refer it to a place where you could do all that in-depth research so that that doesn't sit on all 13 of us necessarily. Um, but I, I'm still struggling as Councillor Brewer and, and Councillor Schreiber ha are with right now we don't, I just don't see what we have for this committee at this point versus if there's a proposal that comes to us from, say, the Transportation Advisory Committee or the Planning Board for a review of a master plan, that at that time maybe we can create an ad hoc committee that does it and go from there to see how well it works before we, you know, as a referral, before we then have that big discussion. I think I, I at least, even if I'm not on that committee, want to have a on these proposals, a discussion within the town council as a whole, too, um, on that holistic approach. So I, I don't want to farm it out to just a committee for those discussions either. Um, but I would love to have a committee that looks at it in depth to, to give us a background for that those discussions. I just don't see where that falls right now with the work that is getting done or coming to us now. And so I feel like we need a chance to figure out a little bit more about how this committee might work in the future. And it could start as an ad hoc or a standing one once it has something assigned to it. Additional mm -hmm. comments? Councillor Bowman. Um, I'm not um, arguing about the, I'm not sure about the timing of this committee, but I think it needs to be a standing committee and not an ad hoc committee, just because the importance of economic development, that's a foundation for this community, uh, for our town, and to have that holistic vision and to continue to support our businesses, our professionals, housing, all of those issues, I think this needs to be a standing committee. Additional comments? Councillor Shane. I just want to lend my voice to, um, I don't think there's disagreement that we might want to have a committee like this. It may be that we don't want to set it up right now. It would be better if we set it up and we have specific things we want it to do, because otherwise we're going to have to keep adding other sentences to it. What I've heard, we want to add transportation and permits. Um, and I think there is a lot of work to be done, but we don't want to have five counselors have to start meeting to figure out what it is they're working on the first two months they're meeting. It would be nice, if we had a specific thing we wanted to sign, I could see getting this up and running right away. And I, I'm just worried that we will all find ourselves in lots of meetings trying to figure out what we're meeting on if the meeting, the committee doesn't already have a clear, per, immediate purpose and something it needs to do in the next couple months. So I'm hearing, yeah, Councillor Pam. Okay, um, there just are there are so many things that um, could be discussed in this committee, uh, in terms of looking, trying to look at the whole. Um, there's economic development. There is the whole matter of looking and, and evaluating um, some of the plans for the downtown, for the parks. Uh, these are all things that the whole council will have uh, votes on, that will be part of whole council discussions but they require a lot of uh, detailed looking at and study, and it just it made sense to me that there were, this was a, a, a good suggestion for a committee where we could look at these issues, and we could try to be a little bit more holistic and think about, um, you know, there are other places to look at it, but like sidewalks, roads, and parking as part of, of looking at how things are being planned and developed in the town. Councilor Schreiber. So, <laughs> One way to start is to make this a committee of 13. So basically have the committee, but make it a committee of the whole. And so then we can at least see how the committee structure, because what I've heard is that almost everybody wants to be involved in these discussions. So if it's a committee somewhere between five and 13 counselors, then we have the committee on the books and we have a way of, you know, we have a way of starting. 
other other comments? Councillor Haneke. I was thinking that for the purposes of tonight's discussion, it sounds like we're not quite even settled on what the language would be um, in order, if we're looking to actually establish committees tonight, that for this, at, at, maybe there'll be others that we're not quite settled on language too, but it sounds like versus the finance committee that this one we're really struggling with what it should say. And so I, I've at this point maybe leaning towards potentially striking it for tonight's meeting and bringing it back and maybe there's a few counselors that could look at coming up with a robust wording that might include all of it, whether that's assigned to one person so there's no actual formal committee to it, um, or assigned to a couple that would then have to meet in open meeting to discuss and hash it out, I don't know, but might it, it might be more prudent to strike it tonight and have it come back on our next agenda after a counselor or two really thinks about the potential wording. Councillor Ryan. I'd like to second that notion. Um, we clearly are not of one mind or even close. Um, my understanding is we're going to try to gather next month and talk about some goal setting and, and have some more general conversations. Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like we really need to have those conversations before we're going to be able to settle this particular issue. Um, as Councilor Haneke said, maybe we'll have trouble with some of the others as well, but they seem more focused. This one is all over the map, and we're all over the map, so I would suggest we take it out. Um, we will be talking over the next month in, I think, uh, other settings, and I think we just need to talk some more and, and hear what each other has to say. So I propose taking this out and moving on. Are there other comments on this one before we move on? Yes, Councilor Mo. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Councilor Haneke. Councillor Ryan, that once we have other meetings where we hash out our priorities as our strategic vision as a town council, then out of that we can see what you know what are the other committees, and I'm sure this will, um, you know, this can be hashed out more there. But just saying, it's an important one, and I'm not letting go of it. <laughs> okay. So the general, what I'm hearing from some councillors is the need for something like this, but that there's a definitional problem. And what I'm hearing from other counselors is that therefore we should defer on this committee. We're not voting at this point. We're moving on to the next committee, okay? Communications, Outreach, and Appointments Committee. Last, last week when we discussed this, it was actually pieces of this were in two different committees. Instead, we combined them. Um, to be communications, outreach, and appointments, and the appointments was brought over from a different committee. I will tell you that this is a committee we do need because we have several appointments coming up. Councillor Brewer. Some edits I think would be helpful. In section two, appointments, Item B needs to be split into two items, therefore we would have A, B, C, and D because it is not appropriate to just blend those two concepts together in terms of the candidates for employment as department heads and appointments to boards and committees. We just need to separate that out. Um, they're not in the same sentence in the charter and they need to be broken apart so it's quite clear when people glance at this what that's for. Then so when we do that, can, so, can we just pause yeah, for that sure. a moment? And I just want to clarify. Um, review and advise the council on all candidates forwarded by the town manager for employment as department heads. That Period. would be one of the items. Yes. The second one would be the same for appointments to boards and commissions in accordance with their charter. Exactly. So there would be two pieces to that one. Right. So okay. that way we now it. have an A, B, C, and D. And the other comment I wanted to make associated with that in terms of um, us training ourselves, just as we're still trying to figure out how we're referring to each other, which honorifics we're using, I would like us to stop using board and commission at this point in our time, and you know we may revisit that in the future. But there are boards, there are committees, there are commissions. They are not exactly interchangeable because commissions often have legal authority that other committees do not. I would really like it to say what it says in the charter, which is the incredibly boring yet effective multiple member bodies. That's what they are. They are not boards, committees, commissions, task forces, working groups. 
There are multiple member bodies as defined as multiple member bodies in the charter. Okay. And that, that's a substitute for the word boards and commissions. Okay. Multi-member bodies. Multiple member bodies. Are there other discussion points? Councillor Bowman. So one other observation I think many of us made was the, the difficulty of uh, getting diverse communities to participate and, <coughs> and inclusion. And I was wondering if this is the committee that's going to do some kind of research or work with the community participating officers to figure out what are the challenges, institutional barriers, social challenges, individual challenges that different communities have in participating in our government. If 1B refers specifically to the community participation officer, and that is in fact one of the many responsibilities. Councillor Haneke. I, I actually just have a bunch of edits <laughs> that are non-substantive okay. really. In section 1A, the referral to section 2.13 should probably also refer to section 5.3, which is where the finance budget public forum is mentioned in the charter. Yeah. Um, both section 1B and the new 2D are, are missing, oh, and the new probably B and C in section two are missing periods at the end of their sentences. Um, so it's 2A, I guess. Um, and if you're splitting out B and C, which I actually agree with Alyssa, I was going to, uh, Councilor Brewer, I was going to make the exact same re request, including the multiple member body reference, um, make sure the charter references are split appropriately too. Yeah. So it's 211A and 211B. 11A refers to department heads, and 11B refers to multi, multiple member bodies. Okay. Other comments, questions, discussion? Councillor Shane. Uh, just building on what um, Councillor Baumilne was saying about uh, trying to bring in people for appointments where we're really trying to get broad participation. I think the word outreach is clearly here, but it's uh, referring more to district meetings and outreach to residents. I don't know exactly, I'm not good at wordsmithing, but on appointments, if we added something else on uh, figuring out if we have a strategy to, to broaden the outreach to encourage people to apply. You know, so it's applying for the appointment so that we get a diverse group coming in. So it's outreach both in us reaching out to our constituents, but it's also on appointments, thinking about how. So it just needs to be worded, you know, uh, also come up with strategies or suggestions on how to broaden that outreach. So I, I like this committee a lot, and I think it's very clear what it would be doing and just conceptually trying to think of a, a group trying to work with the town manager to figure out how do we broaden that participation. So under 1A, after the word and other strategies to broaden participation, comma, ensure transparency, ensure regular tra and transparency communication and outreach. Something like that. I'm more than willing to listen to other wordsmithing. Councilor Brewer. So one of the things we insert there, I think, to help reflect that is we didn't mention the resident advisory, the residence advisory committee whose job it is to be appointed by the town manager to do those things. And so I'm not sure where that fits, but just as the community participation officer is not owned by the council, it is owned by the town manager, as is the residence advisory committee, but some reference to them and the fact that interaction will take place between those groups. And that is also referenced in the charter under C. Ms. Haneke probably has it handy. I'm sorry, speak where is up. it? Section 33C.
So that would possibly become B, and then C would become the community participation officer. So that it would read work with the resident advisory committee committee as outlined in the charter uh, section 3.3 C and then that the next one would be item um, C B would become C got it excellent thank you additional comments on this one okay um, let me try to summarize what I think we have said. Uh, in 1A, we are referring to, we want to add into this including other strategies to broaden participation, comma, ensure regular communication, regular and transparent communications and outreach to the residents of Amherst. Uh, and that the reference there is not only section 2.13, but also section 5.3. Um, B, I'm going to, would now be work with the Resident Advisory Committee as outlined in the charter section 3.3 C, and C, and the, what was formerly B would become C, and that is work with the Community Participation Officer our officers as outlined in the charter sections 3.3D. Then down below, there is a uh, splitting of what was B to become B and C. The B would read, serve as the committee to review and revise the council and all candidates forwarded by the town manager for employment as department heads. The reference there is section 2.11A and then a new would say, new uh, C would say, serve as the committee to review and advise the council on all candidates forwarded by the town manager for appointment to multiple member bodies in accordance with the charter. And that reference would be section 2.11B. And then what was C becomes D. Is there any other? Comments, yes, Councillor Haneke. I don't know what Councillor Ross is gonna say. This is the only time in this document in sections now 2.2B and C that we say just council instead of town council. Okay. So I would recommend the change to town council. So that is both for B and C, okay? Councillor Ross, was that your, okay, Councillor Ross. I had a question, but I realize it's outside the scope of this conversation, so I'm going to hold it. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Yes. Just Mr. a clarifying Bachman. question. So under um, the new 2.2B um, or 2C, is it just for the town manager's recommendation for appointments, or are you going to look at your, is this committee going to handle your own appointments to, say, the zoning board or planning board? Excellent question. Yes, it's covered in A. Okay. Editing in public is fun. Um, Councilor Bowman. I, I don't know if someone can answer this question about um, the organization of the committees that the town manager is appointing. Um, are they reporting to the town manager? I'm just trying to understand the work that these committees do. Where do they get turned in? And, and I'm asking that because one of the concerns I heard from people who are hesitant to participate in the committees is they feel they put in the work and then it doesn't go anywhere. And so I'm just wondering, in terms of organization of the flow of information and work, where does the work of the committees go to and, and what happens to it? <laughs> Mr. Bachelman, do you want to start with that one or would you like me to start? Sure, it, it sort of depends what the committee is and how yes. it was formed. Um, if it's, for instance, the planning board, their work would go directly to the council 
Um, other committees would, fl the, that work is designed to be executive in order and it would go through the town manager's office and then be presented to the council which would then give it to a subcommittee and come back or whatever. And I think I saw in one town where each of the town council committees was also, I don't know how they organized it because here the town managers appointed, like you said, they're executive committees, so they're, but in one town, the, the town council committee was overseeing each of, the, or somehow was ensuring <coughs> like maybe the economic development, which is looking for housing, is also sort of checking in with the housing committees. And I don't know if that's something um, we want to consider. That actually gets us back into the committee that we've decided to defer, or that we the discussion is to defer. Okay. okay. At some point in. in the future, we'll see whether or not people feel a need for that kind of committee. Although we'll vote tonight. Is there anything else on Communication, Outreach, and Appointments <coughs> Committee? Yes, Councillor Hannigan. I'm sorry, I missed, I, I just wanted to make sure we changed the wording when you reworded C to multi -mem multiple member bodies. I, I missed, did. okay. At least in my scribbles, I have done that. I also believe that our town clerk has done that too. Okay, is there anything else on this one? All right, yes. So, Schreiber. I think as a general rule, we need to look at the size of these committees. So if all the ones that are on the table tonight approved, that's 20 committee slots divided by 13 counselors. Mm -hmm. Plus, so we, so um, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a way to make some of these less than five. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the right number is, four. <laughs> So I, I know that other counselors thought that it should be an odd number because of, um, then you don't get a tie vote, but if the, the, these groups are only making recommendations to the full council, maybe an even number is okay. But I just would be cautious of mm -hmm. making everything too big right okay. here at the start. Is there a further discussion on the issue of size? On, I think we should take it committee by committee so that yeah. On communication, outreach, and appointment, right now I've written it as five. Is there further ideas about that? Three or four? Commissioner Hannock, Councillor Hanneke. Um, these committees are likely deemed multiple member bodies under the charter, and section 9.12D says that all appointed multiple member bodies when established shall be composed of an odd number of members, not less than three. So I thought I'd point that out before we start discussing size. So, so for the purposes of this discussion, the lowest it can go to is three, and the next number up would be five. Is that correct? Thank you. Yes, Councillor, I'm sorry. Mr. Bachman. Uh, I guess it's just a technical question. If multiple, if the council is exempt from multiple member bodies because the definition of multiple member bodies says it excludes the council. That is a technical question that the Charter Commission, if I put that hat on, did not fully vet. Um, the, the definition of multiple member bodies excludes the council, but does not actually exclude subcommittees of the council. So that would probably be an interpretation someone would need to make. Would that be something, something that our town council would, our town attorney would I guess. Councilor Brewer. I think it would be a really bad idea to redefine council committees as not subject to the multiple member bodies rules mm -hmm. because the multiple member bodies rules are the lovely ones that insist on public comment in addition to open meeting law. And basically it, would, it does not seem sensible to me that we would have different kinds of committees that are almost exactly the same but not exactly. There certainly can be bodies in the future that are not multiple member bodies that are something that the town manager and his executive authority can just decide to put together that aren't subject to open meeting law, that aren't multiple member bodies. He can have any even number of whatever that he wants for that. But I think it would be a mistake to look at our committees as being other than multiple member bodies. I don't think that's something okay. a road we need to go down. So working under... 
working under an assumption in this case that we will comply as if we are multiple member bodies in this case. Uh, the, these standing committees would be, so the lowest number would be three and the next number would be five. So the discussion on the table was whether or not we would reduce the size of this from five to three. Councillor, I'm sorry, Councillor DeAngelis. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I think five is a good number. And I think that so many of us are interested in all of these committees that I think uh, reducing the number would be, um, I, I can't think of the right adjective. I was going to say wasteful, but that, I don't think it, I don't quite mean that. But. Okay. Councillor Pam. Um, I forgot, but somewhere it says how many members of a committee have to be there for the committee to meet. It's so a, if you have only three, there's a, a chance. Quorum. Um, it would be, you wouldn't be able to have a meeting a lot of the times. The quorum would be two. The quorum would be two. Would be two. You're right. That, I, that's too small. Yeah. All right. So at this point, are we ready to move on to the next one? All right. Uh, governance Organization and Legislation Committee. I will say that we have added in the draft that you're looking at uh, item two, which is to review proposed bylaw changes and additions for forum content and organization to assure that bylaw, that bylaws, yes. that has to have an S, are clear and consistent with the town code. Again, the word in this case, town code, is just being used as a placeholder. We haven't really named our bylaws. Um, number three, number formerly number two would become number three. And again, it says this committee shall consist of five counselors. Discussion. Yes, Councillor Brewer. So one of the great things about inventing these things from whole cloth is trying to figure out where we are and where we're going. And so it feels to me that if we need this committee, which I suspect that we do from the standpoint that it looks like the way it reads is that if the planning board proposed changing a bylaw, it would be referred to us, then this committee, possibly. We're mm -hmm. not exactly sure on how that will work before we would actually get into discussing it as a group of 13. And it, so there is that. There's also the current bylaw review committee, and right. there's also the current ad hoc rules of procedure committee. So if we need this, so circling back to where I started, if we need this, then I think we need to specifically call out those two bodies as being within, connected to this group in some fashion. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, when the work of both those bodies is done, bylaw review may not be for a year, um, rules could be six months, then we can chain, alter the charge so that those things are no longer in there. But this feels like, at this point, unless I'm misreading it, the umbrella to what's actually happening already in two particular bodies. Okay. Councilor Schreiber. So this feels like two very different committees and two very different skill sets. Like one that is sort of dealing with our internal organization. And the other one, the one that's in blue, is almost one of the most important duties that we do, you know, consider and vote on basically policy. So I'm actually wondering if, in fact, those shouldn't be two different committees, now that I just said this whole thing about the lean and the mean. But the, but the, um, in the way the blue, the blue number two reads like a rules committee. So we, you know, like the, almost like a executive board that would, has special responsibility to, you know, to review and recommend proposed bylaws, particularly the part about content. So when you're making a, when you're evaluating content, then you're really getting into, they will be voting on, you know, three to two, we don't like the content of this. So it's an incredibly important function. So may I just try to summarize yeah. what I think I'm hearing, and that is governance organization and legislation you're suggesting would be uh, broken into two committees. One would be governance and organization, and it would basically deal with things like internal rules and so forth. The second committee would be a legislation committee, and that was the one that would deal, deal, deal much more with bylaws. It just feels like two very different, excuse me, it just feels like two very different things. Councillor Steinberg. Um, 
I appreciated the President's responsiveness. I made the suggestion about adding number two, and I think I should explain why I did. And that was that when I was looking at it, uh, I was looking at it also in the context of the committee that we are not now talking about, the committee yet to be named. And uh, I was looking at these two committees together and feeling like um, a proposal that was going before that committee would also need to go before this committee the way it was written. And what was the purpose of it going before two different committees? And that's why I put in um, what was really kind of the functions of the bylaw review committee that we've had uh, um, looking at bylaws on a temporary basis to help us get them into shape for our new form of government and uh, uh, tried to isolate those functions in the review into a separate process, leaving the policy um, totally in the hands of the committee that it was assigned to. And uh, so that was the, uh, what, what, what I was thinking about when I made that suggestion. Other comments, Councilor Shane. Um, I, I just want to build on the previous two comments. I think we have two tasks in front of us, and they're listed under here. One has four people assigned to it right now, which is the rules and procedures of our own council. And then two meetings ago, we decided not to just accept the edited bylaws, but assign people to read them carefully, and we didn't <coughs> assign them. And I see both of those as separate tasks that would be assigned to two different groups, not necessarily this group. So I want to raise the question of whether we need the larger superstructure of a permanent committee mm -hmm. right now called governance, rather than one group assigned, one group volunteering or assigned to work, read the bylaws carefully and decide what we do, and that's due within a year, but it could be earlier. And then the Rules and Procedures Committee were due to do something in two months and finish by six months. You know, so we have two immediate things that will require. So the larger uh, legislative committees, uh, again, in some other towns, it's the area where when things come up that the council has to consider, they refer it to this committee to take a look at it. Uh, and it could come from another committee, but I don't know whether we have how those work yet. So it doesn't originate in this group. It gets referred. Which, in a way, these two things are getting <coughs> referred. So I'm just wondering whether we need a permanent standing committee right now or we need two temporary groups looking at these two tasks. Other comments, Councilor, Councilor Dumont? Uh, I'd agree with Councilor Shane. And um, uh, as I said, at the last meeting, I, um, I feel uncomfortable with number two, uh, the content part of it, because it feels like it is setting up an executive committee and um, it feels like it takes away from the current standing committees and the ability of the full council to hear matters coming directly from the standing committee committees. Um, uh, I think that we, we not, I feel like we all were voted to be the new legislators and <laughs> that we should be the body that uh, decides on the content of legislation. Councilor Haneke. So I agree in substance with what, with what Councilor Shane said about we've got two committees at this point that are looking at, in some sense, the substance of what this committee on its paper, given Councilor Steinberg's addition, is set to do. But I want to bring up what happens if, say, the planning board brings us a bylaw change that's substantive. Where are we sending it at this point? Is it going to come to us as a council of 13 to begin that discussion and end that discussion all at once? Or do we as a council want a smaller group to initially look at, at, at the substance of that for some purpose? And, and I don't necessarily know what that purpose might be, but do we want a smaller committee of the council 
reviewing substantive bylaw changes when they are proposed either by another multiple member body in town or by residents because they can be proposed by residents or they can be proposed by counselors. And where, where, where do we want that function going? Because that, given the committee not to be named right now because we weren't sure how that one would be worded, and given if we, this one doesn't actually include any functions like that, if something comes up and we can't necessarily plan on when that might happen, what are we doing with that? Councillor Ross. I, I agree with Councillor Haneke. I think uh, this is actually an, a really important committee and I think it's important to be a standing committee. Uh, yes, I think right now there may be some overlap between our ad hoc rules committee and also uh, bylaw review committee. I think there are also some important differences between them. Um, and I think of course the temporary nature of those other two committees um, means that a standing committee would be really useful. Um, I think it's important to some extent uh, that when a, a bylaw change or any type of uh, legislation comes before the council, uh, it's first vetted uh, to make sure that it's consistent with code, but even things like, you know, when I read content, I don't necessarily think of necessarily the substance of the content, um, but is all the necessary content there. Maybe uh, someone submits a proposed bylaw change uh, that's missing a critical piece of information uh, that it needs in order for it to be considered by the full council. Uh, it wouldn't be efficient for the full council to go back and recommend that. Um, but I'm thinking in terms of promulgating bylaws, all of the different components that go into it, it would be useful just to have a committee that looks at it both for consistency, um, but also for completeness before it's then forwarded to the council to be considered. Councilor Schreiber. So this is kind of exciting, <laughs> making the airplane while we're flying, but I really have no idea that if I wanted a bylaw, if I was really interested in a bylaw, no spitting on the sidewalk, how I would even start that. So I, I, I think that, so in the case of the planning board, they have a zoning subcommittee, which is basically the number two version of you know, what's being described. So people, when, when um, either the planning board itself or out, you know, um, community members propose bylaw changes, it goes to that committee. And they, they try to work it to make it into a workable bylaw and they vote on everything that's described here, and then it goes to the full, you know, to the full planning board to then also um, to vote. But I, I guess that process would work here, that any proposed policy or by bylaw change would go first to this committee, and then only once vetted would come back to us. So I, I support that. Councilor Steinberg. Yeah, I appreciated the comments from uh, Councillors Dumont and Ross, and uh, because when I created, put in the word content, I did not um, intend for it to be the policy that was being discussed, but whether the wording of the actual proposal was um, sufficiently clear to um, not create confusion and to be capable of implementation. And I think about two different bylaws that uh, were adopted by the town meeting within the past couple of years that were fairly significant policy issues where a lot of work had to be done and the select board kind of tried to take on that role a little bit of saying to the proponents, hey, uh, do you, you might want to consider a change here uh, because it's not sufficiently clear. We weren't trying to um, in any way change the intent of the um, people who were bringing it forward, but trying to make sure that it was worded in an appropriate fashion that it could be implemented. And uh, so that was the, uh, the purpose for which I used that word, and it may not be sufficiently clear, and I think we do need clarity in what we're putting forward here. So um, I am appreciate it being brought forward. Councilor Dumont. So are you suggesting that we change the word content to the word clarity? 
because content means substance, the substantive meaning. Yes, Councillor Steinberg. I mean, the other, th uh, I don't know that that helps as much as maybe putting something in as to, uh, to make it clear what we're not trying to do, which is to say, but not the, pol the underlying proposed policy or something like that, uh, so that we understand what it's not. Um, and uh, I mean, the example that I gave, uh, or, uh, one of the ones that I was referring to, was the, um, uh, in part, there were actually two parts to the uh, zero energy bylaw that came before town meeting, then got revised and put, and then went back to town meeting for adoption after a committee worked on it that included uh, two of us who are on the council now. And um, one of it was is that it was, because it was kind of written, the way it was written and put together initially, um, it had a lot of uh, problems with the clarity with which it was written. So there was that, and it was that part of it that I was thinking about for this committee. It was a separate part that had to do with clarifying some policy issues uh, with zero energy, and that was not intended to be, in my head, to be in this committee. Right. So the word content seems to be the issue here, in that we don't mean to change the intent of the bylaw but in fact to clarify it. So form, clarity, and organization. Yes, Councilor Voss. Uh, I think that um, obviously we're all gonna have different ideas of what content means. Uh, I don't necessarily think content has to be substantive. So for instance, uh, in the conversation we just had about the Communications Outreach and Appointments Committee, uh, I believe it was Councillor Haneke recommended adding a specific reference to the charter uh, in, in 1A. To me, that is a content change in that you are adding content, but it doesn't, and it doesn't necessarily relate directly to clarity, um, but it doesn't have substantive changes. So I don't think that content necessarily uh, is indicative of something that's a substantive change uh, as much as it, it's something that might be necessary to include or useful to include um, for, for consideration. Councilor Ryan. I mean, this, if the sentence ended in additions for form, content, and organization, period, then I would share the concerns that some have expressed. But it goes on to say, to assure that bylaws are clear and consistent with the town code. So that seems to make it a bit more precise in terms of this is looking at it strictly from the point of view of making sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, um, and that's its purpose. It's not uh, designed to have a discussion about the substantive issues. It's just to make sure that it is uh, in the proper form and the content and organization is such that it's consistent with town code. I don't really see the need for word change here. I think it's pretty clear that it's not um, set up as a policy setting entity at all. Councillor Haneke. So um, I, I have a proposed rewrite, um, mm -hmm. but the with the consistent with the town code actually concerns me because there will be bylaw proposals that are not consistent with the current bylaws and that's the exact reason they are being proposed because people want to change the bylaws. So reviewing for consistency, you know, that type of consistency I think is a problem. My, uh, I'm just gonna read this sentence um, and this was taken from a prior version slightly. Review bylaws, orders, and resolutions proposed for action by the town council for form, content, and organization to ensure they are clear, consistent, and actionable. This may include consultation with the town attorney, which would then allow the committee to have that attorney opinion before it gets to the council if there's concern that there might not be something legal, you could have that in there. I'm not sure the word clear, consistent, I'm not sure about the actionable. That's I think where we're trying to go with, are they something that is something that you could actually enact um, in a way that could be function, 
functioning. So maybe clear, consistent, and functional. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm going to ask you to read that again, please. Councillor Haneke. Um, review bylaws, orders, and resolu resolutions proposed for action by the town council for form, content, and organization to ensure they are clear, consistent, and I had said actionable, functional might work. I think so. Councillor DeAngelis says actionable. Actionable. And then you also added. And then the second sentence, this may include consultation with the town attorney. Okay. Councilor Brewer. Several things. One is I'm loath to include the word order until we define what that is, and we haven't done that yet, and we're not a city council that throws orders around because we've never done that yet. We might do that under the new rules of procedure, but I would just like to drop that word for now, and we can always come back, and because bylaws and resolutions are what we know this would be working on. Orders, we can. I think we could easily just drop. It's not yet part of our nomenclature. Um, in terms of... Content, I think we're going to end up still having a, perhaps a little bit of difficulty with that from the standpoint that while I agree with what Councillor Haneke just said, I disagree with the idea that what it was trying to do was just do uh, making sure it, what the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. That's staff's job. That's not any committee of the town council's job. That's staff's job. Um, we're not supposed to be sitting there making sure that it's letter B and subsection 5 and it's got a little section for SME. That No, that's not our job, and that's not what counselors should be spending their time doing. But if it's, it is looking at substance from the standpoint that does it have a clear picture, the consistency, the clarity issue, and I, I think we have to remind ourselves that None of these, and maybe we need to add words that specifically say this, although it's certainly mentioned on the powers and duties page. Referring something to this body doesn't mean it goes into a black hole. Right. So referring something to this body means this body then needs, that body needs to report to this body and say, so we got this thing, and it really didn't make any sense. So we sent it back, and that's why you haven't heard more from us about it. Or we got this thing, we see this part of it needs some work. What do y'all think? Should we be working on this further? Should we ask them to talk to this other committee? What should we do? It's going to be absolutely incumbent on this body that we are appointing to report back to this body quite regularly, I think, from what it says under powers and duties, as to what they've said no to, so that there's no question that somebody is serving as some sort of gatekeeper and keeping the rest of the counselor from the rest of the counselors from seeing it. I absolutely don't think that's the intention of this body. It's just a place to send things, when to do some of the work but not the staff work, um, to sort out if it has the things we would need to potentially be actionable. Okay, just to summarize, the word order is suggested that we omit that at this point since we don't have any orders. Um, and the other issue that um, Councilor Brewer is just making is true for all subcommittees, all, excuse me, all standing committees, and that is you all report back to the council. This is just a way of working through issues before they come to the council so that they're in a little better form and format. Um, and that's true for finance. It's true for the committee that shall not be named. Uh, it's true for uh, the Communication Outreach and Appointments Committee, and it's true for Governance, Organization, and Legislation Committee. Okay. Councillor Dumont. Just wondering if it's true that um, uh, any bylaw would need to go through the town council, C-O-U-N-S-E-L. I think that's how you spell it. <laughs> um, the town in attorney? In any event. In town any attorney? Event, yes, the town attorney would have to look at any bylaw in any event. And if so, what would this, the, 
the function of the committee under number two here, how would that let me, help? Let me take a, um, a page from an experience, if you will, and that is the one that I share with Councilor Steinberg, and that is on the zero energy bylaw rewrite. We did a lot of discussion. I, my calendar shows we met 13 times. Maybe it was 16, I can't remember. It was numerous hours over a two month period to get ready to bring it to spring town meeting. In the end, the town manager did take that bylaw and pass it by town, count, town attorney so that, but they weren't going to sit in that room for those 13 meetings as we went through and discussed the actual content and intent of that bylaw. They were going to look at it in the end to make sure that it was in the proper form, that it was consistent with the town, et cetera. There, but you're not gonna have a town councilor sitting there for 13 meetings on one bylaw. Other comments? Just for clarity's sake, uh, you said counselor sitting there. I was, was that attorney counsel? Attorney. Attorney sitting, sitting there. there. Yeah, sitting there for 13 meetings. Thank you. Are there other discussions on governance, organization, and legislation? So we've gone back and forth, whether we need the committee or not need, need, need the committee. We've gone back and forth on whether it should be one committee or two committees. We definitely recognize that the ad hoc rules committee is already working on a piece of this with a time frame of six months. And we also have a bylaw review committee that is all, already working on pieces of this. However, there is the recognition that there may be additional bylaws that would come before the council that are not being covered by the bylaw review committee at this time. And this would be the committee that it would be referred to, or frankly, any other bylaws that might emerge out of any of the other committees uh, would eventually come to this for this purpose. So then after that, we got to the issue of what should number two really state? And um, with Councillor Haneke and the clerk, I'm going to ask that somebody read the number two. I have, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, number two would read, review bylaws and resolutions proposed for action by the town council for form, content, and organization to assure they are clear, consistent, and actionable by the town council, period. This may include consultation with the town attorney, period. Yes, okay. Are there other conversations or discussion about this particular committee? Yes. It's not about the committee per se, but I just, um, unless my memory is wrong, I don't think anyone has been assigned yet to review those bylaws that That's were given That's correct. To us. So just, you know, so it's, we don't have a group yet, but so that has to go somewhere at some point. That is correct. Okay, can we just quickly, well, not quickly, could we now turn to powers and duties of council committees? We did not have an opportunity to discuss this last week. Basically, it remains unchanged. Um, and the only suggestion is to move six to four, which you did in the form that you received today.
Yes, Councillor Haneke. So I have a number of changes, but I'm just going to preface it with section 9.12 of the charter has uniform procedures applicable to multiple member bodies. So many of my changes are to make these powers and duties of the council committees consistent with what's in the charter. I recognize that the charter allows the multiple member bodies to determine their own rules unless another provision is made by the town council so we can change them. Um, but, but the bigger changes in, in terms that I had were in number two, the meetings, the committees. I pretty much just mirrored section 912A. Mm -hmm. So I would add committees shall meet, I would add the words regularly at such times and places as required by the council or the committee's chair. And then I'd put a new a new sentence that says special meetings of a committee may be held if called by the committee's chair or by one third of the members thereof, but not fewer than two, um, because that's what the charter currently okay. has multiple member bodies allowing special meetings to be called by. Um, I would add a number somewhere that just says committees are subject to the requirements of open meeting law. Um, and then I would also add an eight or another number that all regular meetings of committees shall provide for a period of public comment. The town council's rules and procedures shall apply to the public comment period so that we don't have to reiterate what those public comment rules are. Is there anything else, Councillor Haneke? Those were the big ones. Okay, so it's um, in number two, it said the committee shall meet regularly as such and at such times and places. Places as required by the town council. Uh, and then if, after the word chair, it goes comma or by one third of the members of the committee, but not less than two. Not, and then, not quite. So I split it into two sentences. Okay. So the regular meetings as required by the town council or the committee's chair, period. And then a new sentence that takes from 912A, the second sentence, special meetings of a committee may be held if called by the committee's chair or by one third of the members thereof, but not fewer than two. It just modifies that second sec sentence of section 912A from the charter. Okay. And then you also suggested, I think most correctly, that um, we want to add a statement about open meeting law and public comment. Um, Councillor Pam. I have one question about the, the last one, number eight, mm -hmm. about public. Uh, public comment uh, meeting. You said that the rules that we the council establishes on public comment should apply, but um, perhaps a committee. I mean, it, depending upon whether you say it's at the beginning or the end or both, uh, a committee meeting might decide they wanted it at the beginning or the end, and why why restrict them? Councillor Haneke. I, I, it wasn't an intent to restrict the placement. It was more of looking at the sort of substance of those sort of rules that we've adopted already, the three minutes, the no discussion, those types of things, um, not necessarily a placement. Now, I don't know where the council's permanent rules will fall, but that, that was my thinking in having it consistent between, since these are council committees, having it consistent with how we operate public comment at a council meeting as a subcommittee too. Are there other comments on the rules, on the duties, I'm sorry, powers and duties of council committees? Councilor Dumont. Um, when I first read this, I wondered if this, the powers, the, these rules, should be within the purview of the rules committee that's going to be meeting tomorrow. 
Meaning, might you discuss these and at some point make different changes? Yes. Is that what you meant? Yes. Okay. I don't see any reason why not. Uh, and another comment. Um, I think that the sentence in number one uh, at a committee's first meeting, the member who was first in the order of those announced by the council president to serve on the committee shall call the meetings and preside until a chair is elected. Um, I think it would probably be better to have a method that was um, like clearly more fair, like the member most senior in age or, or toss a coin, <laughs> some method that, that uh, you know, is, seems like it's even-handed. Okay. Good luck with that. Right. Other comments on this? Yes, um, Councillor Haneke. One other, in terms of committee officers, Yes. It lists a chair and a vice chair. Yes. It doesn't list a clerk. Um, should we be designating a specific person that will be the clerk in charge of these committees? I think, you know, the committees are going to have to take minutes. And so do we want a clerk designated to, uh, that person could either be the minute taker or could be the person who reviews the minutes that are taken by if, if they rotate around committees um, around the committee members. Um, if most of our committees are only five people, do we need a vice chair? Do we want to require a vice chair? Um, I think we might want a discussion around what officers are necessary on these committees. Councillor Shane. I just want to build on that comment on what I th thought Councillor DeMont was suggesting is we're going to take some of these up in the Rules Committee, so I agree we don't necessarily need a vice chair when we've only got five people. And clerk to me always means sort of a separate person, but if we said someone will take minutes, you know, it could be, one, it, it may well be one of the five people who are there, but someone just, we have to be taking minutes and reporting them back. So I've been looking at some of the other subcommittees of various things. They don't have the roles formally designated, but it's clear there are always minutes. If it's a public meeting, there have to be minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, other comments on this piece, mm -hmm. Councilor Brewer? So understanding that, yes, we can talk about this tomorrow at the rules of procedure as opposed to the rules and procedure, the way it's posted right now, but we'll get there, um, is I'm also uncomfortable with the second sentence in item one in terms of who got called on first or whatever. And so I would just assume that we saw that what, I, what I'm planning to recommend tomorrow, unless I hear differently, is that when the council president appoints the members, right, people say who wants to be on things and the council president may decide that on the spot or may take it under advisement and bring it back to a subsequent meeting. But at any rate, when the council president would then temporarily say, and so-and-so's in charge of making sure you all find a time that works together and, getting, and working with the clerk to get the first meeting posted, and then you appoint a chair. So it's, it's almost like an interim chair, but it's somebody to kick off the first thing so that somebody's responsible to make that happen, and you could do that by checking in with that person before you just blindly assign that to them, or they could say, no, I can't do it because I'm going to be away, so could you ask one of the other four to do it? But rather than saying it's who was first in order of those announced, that just sounds super goofy to me. So, Councilor Schreiber. So the main reason to have a vice chair is in case the chair is absent. So I, I would recommend leaving vice chair in or else specifying that there's a clerk and the clerk shall be preside over meetings if the, the chair is not available. Um, I, I'm, I think vice chair is fine. Yes, Councillor Schwartz. Um, 
So I was just going to say that, yeah, if this, I would agree with that, that it's really important to have a vice chair because if all of a sudden your chair is out, then it's who's going to run the meeting and what's, so that makes a lot of sense to me. You're probably not ever going to, or very few times you're going to need it, but when you do, you really do. And I would also say that taking minutes is an arduous task, and I would think personally that you wouldn't want to have just one person all the time having to um, take minutes because sometimes they can also take away from your understanding of things as you're trying to take down everything that's said. So I would maybe not use the word clerk. Maybe we, I guess the rules um, committee can think about you know whether or not we should just strike that and mm -hmm. the committee can sort of make up their mind themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Additional comments on this? All right, so let me try something. I'm going to try the following, that we move into action items, but we are only going to approve, I'm only going to ask that we look at and approve finance, communications, outreach and appointments, and governance, organization and legislation, that we defer for the time being on the committee that shall not be named, and furthermore, that I ask the Rules Committee, Ad Hoc Rules Committee, to address the powers and duties of the Council Committees and bring it back to us at the next meeting. Councilor Schreiber. I so move. <laughs> okay. I second the motion. <laughs> um, Councilor Schreiber. Moved the motion. Councillor Pam seconded the motion. Okay. So we're now going to move into, I'm sorry, I just want to point out on the agenda for the audience and those on TV. We're actually now going to move into the action item part of the agenda. We're going to take up each committee on its own. Okay. So that if there are changes, we will make sure that they're in. And we will move first to the Finance Committee. Okay. On the Finance Committee, the changes that I have, I, hold on, I want to I want to do a point of order. Do I need a separate motion to bring finance forward or can we go through all three and then move it? Oh, I'm sorry. The motion I have is to act on finance committee, communications, outreach, and appointments, and governance, organization, and legislation, and refer powers and duties of council committees to the ad hoc rules of procedures committee. So you've got your motion. Okay. So we'll discuss first finance, then we'll move to the uh, communications, outreach, and appointments, and finally, the governance organization and legislative finance. These are the changes that I have already recorded, and I please ask that the clerk check me on these. The first one is on at the end of the sentence at number three, where it says four residents. It should now say four residents as non-voting members. Okay. On A, the, the one counselor strike the S, and later on in that same sentence, it should say budgeting committee, commission. Okay. On B, um, it would say two counselors, S, from this committee will represent the council on the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Yes, okay. And on C, it would say no more than two counselors for this committee will represent the council on the budget coordinating group. Councilor Brewer. So I have two questions. One is a simple um, find and replace that we can ask the clerk to deal with later, which is that these should both say town council instead of just council. Yes. We're referring, I believe we're currently using the idea of councilors, but also 
town council, not just council. And then the other item is, so I know we talked about this a lot, but under item B, if we're not saying no more than, so if we say two counselor, two counselors from this committee will represent the town council and the JCPC, then that implies that will be the only representation from this council on JCPC. And I believe I heard people talking about the idea of additional counselors also representing the council on JCPC. So I'm not sure where we're going with that statement. We could leave it as no more than two. And when we come to JCPC, which is later on in the agenda, take that back up. So that B would read no more than two counselors for this committee will represent the town council on the Joint Capital Planning Committee, blah, blah, blah. And there's a period at the end of that sentence and at the next sentence. Um, yes. Uh, I, I had written down this statement, uh, this is relating to um, Councillor Brewer, plus two, council, two town councillors not from the Finance Committee. We're not gonna put that in here. We're gonna, when we take up JCPC is where we will address that. Whether okay. we're going to add to have as many as four people, okay? So that it would not go under finance committee. But it, instead on finance committee, it would say no more, no more than two counselors. Are there any other changes on finance? Moving on, skipping the next committee. Communication, outreach, and appointments committee. Um, the first change I have is to not only refer in 1A to section 2.13 of the charter, but also section 5.3. The second is to say, and other strategies to broaden participation, comma, ensure regular and transparent communication and outreach to the residents of Amherst. Then B actually becomes C, and instead B reads, work with the resident advisory committee as outlined in the charter, section 3.3C. The B includes the word town council and is split into two. So that the first reads, B actually reads as serve as the, as the committee to review and advise the town council on all, on all candidates forwarded by the town manager for employment as department heads, period. And that is section 211A. The second I have is serve as the committee to review and advise the town council on all candidates forward by the town manager for appointment to multiple member bodies in accordance with the charter. And that is section 2.11B period. And then D, which was formerly C, remains the same. but it needs a period, thank you. Is there anything that I missed on that? I don't, I don't know if you're planning to include this, but um, Councillor Balmin had brought up to being a little more specific on, I guess it's 1B, um, to uh, something to do with um, researching, uh, over, trying to overcome barriers that prevent members from certain communities from participating um, on town committees or for, or for applying to town committees? My intent was to include that when I included the phrase uh, to broaden participation, but that may not be su sufficient. Councillor Bowman. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> 
You did mention that work with community participation officer would include all of the activities. So, so I'm okay with that. Including that phrase is sufficient. Okay. Are there other comments on that one? Okay, moving on to governance, organization, and legislation. Um, I'm going to ask the town clerk to read two. It is now, um, and two becomes three. Uh, number two, review bylaws and resolutions proposed for action by the town council for form, content, and organization to assure they are clear, consistent, and actionable by the town council, period. This may include consultation with the town attorney, period. Further discussion or comment on that? Councilor Dumont. Did we, did we want to add the sentence, this will not include, um, the underlying proposed policy consideration? That was the this issue of whether or not this committee had in a, a, the power, if you will, to change the intent of something. I think people were suggesting that as long as we keep saying clear and consistent, is the goal here, that that was not necessary, but I'm open to discussion on that. I think as long as it continues to say content, that will be subject to misinterpretation. Oh. Councilor Maras. I think under Han uh, Councilor Haneke's proposed changes, uh, clear, consistent, and actionable sets the parameters by which content can be evaluated, and so it by its, by its wording uh, makes it so that you cannot uh, evaluate uh, content under the, from the perspective of intent. Additional comment? Yes, Councilor Schwartz. So I'm just wondering if by keeping in content and then, you know, we're giving these ideas, I wonder if it then still sort of seems open, like, to um, subject of what uh, someone would think was adhering to consistency. <laughs> Does that make sense? Councilor Pam. We could just change the word content to meaning. Um, okay, Councillor Ross. It, just repeating what I said earlier, I think content uh, relates very much to whether something is actionable, um, and so if certain content is missing, it might not be actionable, and so I think the word content is actually important to include here, but as I said, uh, Councillor Haneke's parameters, I think, restrict uh, the committee from going beyond clear, con uh, consistent, and actionable. I'm going to ask that we read the sentence yet again. Review bylaws and resolutions proposed for action by the town council for form, content, and organization to assure they are clear, consistent, and actionable by the town council, period. Councilor Shane. If the word content was changed to wording, isn't that what we're getting at? So you're reviewing the wording to make sure it's clear, it's consistent, I mean, it's, it's an odd way of saying you're reviewing the wording, but that's what you're trying to right. do. You're not trying to get back to what were people trying to do. It's just, is, it, is that clear? I, I know we're just searching for a word that doesn't say go back and change the policy. Right. Councilor Brewer. I think we are going to struggle with this once it's assigned, and we're going to have to figure out where those lines are drawn within the group, which is why it's so important that the group report back to this body. Right. Because speaking of another previous bylaw that I was engaged with for far too long, which was the shade tree regulations bylaw, there were pieces missing from it that needed to be in it based mm -hmm. on what had been said and based what was in mass general law. And so if you're referring to content, yeah, there were sentences missing, there were definitions missing, and those needed to be added before 
in, in our case, it comes to the body of 13, mm -hmm. rather than coming to the body of 13 and saying, well, I missed a couple things, we'll go back some more, um, to give you something to actually work from. Right. And, but not in terms of like turning it from a shade tree committee that has, a, a, and by law that has some substantial power into something that didn't have any power. Like it didn't change the intent. It just tried to make it all work together and it was missing pieces. So content can be actual missing things or incorrect figures as, but not changing the meaning. Councillor Schreiber. So I see this committee as trying to make the best of a proposed by law or policy, so they may not agree with it, but working with whomever the petitioner is to make the best possible uh, thing that we can vote on. But I also do think that they might have a role in sort of explaining what the pluses and the minuses are. So in other words, this is the best way we could do with this particular proposal. Town attorney has cautioned us about this or whatever, So, but still um, the town attorney is an advisor to us, so he may, he or she may say it's not actionable or questionably actionable, but we still may choose to take action on it. But I think presenting sides or presenting almost like what the League of Women Voters does, you know, presenting, um, you know, presenting sides on an issue, I think is an important possible role of this. Councilor Schwartz. Couldn't we just put in what we keep saying and say without changing content or intention? Again, I think what people are saying is that sometimes the, the intention is there. There may actually be things that come up in a bylaw review that are literally not consistent with the laws of Massachusetts. And in that, in that case, you now have, you, you work to try to make it so that it's a workable bylaw, but you may have to change something that's in it uh, in a way that makes it workable. I, I think Councillor Brewer's comment about how this is something you struggle with and so forth. Um, is, is, and also Councillor Haneke's um, measure of what it is we mean when we say we're going to look at form content and organization. Um, I am sure also that if a body that wanted to propose a new bylaw to us felt that we had so tampered with their intent we would hear about it. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Sorry, section uh, 2.10 of the charter uh, deals with the publication of proposed bylaws. So it assumes that the council has received the bylaw, the proposed bylaws in, in full. They have been posted. And then before a bylaw is finally passed, the council will, the full council will have reviewed it twice. So my question is, does the council want to add the charter, the, the charter section reference to this? Um, it's so that it would just say consistent with the charter and then cite the charter reference. Thank you. It's 2.10. Okay. Councilor Haneke. I, I know we are struggling with the wording. I just think at this point, we're close yeah. and we can adopt it potentially and be mindful that if we see this committee as, if the council as a whole feels the committee is going over the bounds we've discussed today, we can come back and revise this mm -hmm. fairly quickly. <laughs> yes. Further, con further comment. All right, we have a motion and a second before us to adopt the charges to the Finance Committee, the Communications Outreach and Appointments Committee, and the Governance Organization Legislation. Yes, Councilor Dumont. 
Uh, would it be appropriate to move to amend the motion to just take them one at a time? To, to start with just the finance committee and then do sure. them one at a time? Sure. I so move. All right. All right, so then we're going to move to, can I have a motion for finance? Do I need a motion for that? We, no, it, it's essentially just been separated out. The motions okay. are still there. Thank we're you. just voting them so three different we're times. We're going to now, we're only looking at finance. Is there any other comment on finance? Are we ready to call the question? Wait. I think there's, okay, so there's a motion and a second. And we were discussing the motion. So that motion's still on the table. But I'm sorry, the motion is to separate. But now there's a new motion. I don't know how this works. And I believe under Robert's rules, a severable motion is yeah, non-debatable. Okay. It just right. happens if the, right. if the right. item can be severed out separately. Right. right. So the motion right now is on the Finance Committee only. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> finance Committee only. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Brewer. This is really an easy question. So we have charges that we approved last time. We have other charges we're gonna be approving tonight, later yet. Um, will these committees, even as our committees, will they be turned into the same kind of standard charge document eventually? Yes. That that's the intention, so they all kind yes, of look the same. Yes, although these are very different committees in that they're committees of the council. Right, and so we would have to make that clear somewhere in those headings that right. we use as the template, but that is the intention, so we yeah. could just shuffle through a we'll bunch of those. We'll be glad to do that. Thank you. Finance Committee, any further conversation? Call a question. All those in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Moving on, Communication Outreach and Appointments Committee. Are there, is there any further conversation, discussion, questions? Sections that you would like to have reviewed? If not, call the question. Yes, I'm sorry? Okay. Yes. You got that, didn't you, on the, I'm sorry, okay. Is there a, any further conversation? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. We're moving on to Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. There was a substantial change in number two on that. We've reviewed it. Any further conversation on it? Any further questions? Call the question. All those in favor? O opposed? It's 12 to one. And just as a reminder, we're re referring powers, duties, and, and duties of council committees to the ad hoc rules committee. Fun making a plane while you're flying. When, um, President, <laughs> Madam President, does the referral need voted on? I'm sorry? Does the referral of the duties of the council committees, whatever it was okay. called. Could I have a motion to refer that the duties? It was part of the motion, so I think we just have to vote. Okay. So now we're going back to the original motion, right? Which was? to vote on these and refer the duties, powers and duties to the ad hoc rules committee, right? Okay. Is there any further conversation? Questions? Call the question. All those in favor? That's unanimous. I suggest we take a five minute break. Right. You're supposed to nudge me when you need.
All right, we're going to reconvene and move on to Joint Capital Planning Committee. Um, this is a committee under the charter, um, and it does have, at a minimum, probably two people from the council. Um, and what you have before you is the charge. So I need a motion to adopt the charge to the Joint Capital Planning Committee. So Councillor Steinberg has moved. Do I have a second? Councillor Swartz has seconded the motion. Discussion. Councillor Shane. Um, I, I'll just repeat, hopefully succinctly, my um, my recommendation that we expand from two council members to four, where two come from finance and two come from council who aren't on finance. And I understood um, the earlier thought that there was a reason the town used to do it the other way, that because we had town meeting bringing in a different group. I was thinking more that this is such an important committee and that it doesn't represent schools or the town or library. It's looking at our capital budget, thinking five years, 10 years down the road, what are our strategies to start to meet our needs and our backlog and that more people understanding the complexity on the council would be better than fewer. So I was looking at to broaden the knowledge on the council knowing that these recommendations will come back. So that's why I thought for, um, again, two coming up from the Finance Committee and then two who are not on Finance Committee. So they, it would not mean that everyone has to be in all the same meetings. So that was the only change I uh, was recommending for this. Okay. In this case, it's under the number of voting members where we would have to change that. Councillor Haneke. So, I'm gonna address that, and then when that discussion's done, I have something else to ask. Mm -hmm. But um, this committee, I believe, does, and please, either the town manager or someone who served on this committee, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, actually votes on the capital portion of the budget, and is this, this is the committee that proposes the capital portion of the budget and what that will include each operating year, I believe. And therefore, I guess my concern is if we put four counselors on, um, well, we've got an issue with there's an even number anyway, um, but there's an equal number of counselors and school committee and library trustees, and I guess I echo um, Councillor Steinberg's comment of the school committee and the library trustees, you know, they they don't, this is how they get their capital needs met and they would be able to be outvoted on anything, essentially, or, or at least tie voted on anything, um, any of, well, outvoted on each of their proposals in some sense on anything they want done, so I guess I'm concerned with that imbalance of potential power on a committee that's going to bring and vote on the budget that we see in a council that already has 13 votes and acts finally on those proposals. Additional comments? Councilor Pam. I, I have a question. Um, so um, this committee, I'm not sure whose committee it is, because at the bottom it says that the town manager will prepare and submit to the town council, and it's at the capital inventory and five-year capital improvement program. Is that supposed to be different from what the uh, JCPC does? I'm just, I'm, I'm on the right committee, right? You are right. Yes. I know. I know that it's. I know that. Yeah. I'm saying, whose committee is this? You said it comes back to the council to be voted on. So I'm not sure who does what in what order. That's Councilor Haneke. That actually goes to my other question, which was, what is the actual charge of this committee, and what is it going to do? Because the reports don't really discuss what its actual duties and role 
right, is. So that was my other overarching, but in term, but I was trying to just address the size. Yeah, I'm not sure who's bringing what. Is it the town manager? We should, if it's a committee, make it at least seven members potentially, um, or five, um, <laughs> to make it that odd number to accord with the charter. Um, where you'd put that one, I mean, maybe it could be the town manager to represent the executive side. I, I don't know um, what potential options we have, but yeah, that's my other concern with this document is what Councillor Pam said of, what is this committee in charge of? Mr. Bockelman. Thank you, Madam President. This committee is advisory to the town manager, as in the first sentence under, under the charter. So it says the town manager with the advice of a joint capital planning committee composed of at minimum representatives from the town council school committee and library trustees shall create a, a capital improvement program. So basically it says the town manager shall create a capital improvement program. So this is a committee of all the elected officials to advise the town manager in how to do that. But ultimately the product, the work product comes from the town manager. Councilor Steinberg. So this is obviously a difficult topic. Yes, I have served on two different occasions on the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Once I served for a period when I was on the Finance Committee, then I didn't serve for a long period of time, and then this last year I served as a member of the Select Board. So I, um, reflecting on my experience with the committee as I respond, um, the former Town Government Act um, specified the creation of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. It was added um, probably, what, in the late 70s maybe, or around. I, but in any event, the, it uses the word also advisory to the town manager. What the function of the committee um, has been pretty well described for the most part is to um, make recommendations as to what should be in the long range capital plan and in the next capital budget and to also make recommendations on some policy matters that are related to um, capital. Um, one of the things that um, came up, for example, in discussion was uh, at what point is maintenance of a building capital and is what point maintenance of a building an operating budget item. And uh, you know, we tried to understand that a little bit better. I don't think we ever came to a perfect conclusion, however, on it. Um, the recommendations then went to the town manager, of uh, which the, you know, there have been various people in that role, but for the most part, I think the town managers have recognized that this was the joint work of um, people from three different elected boards, plus, uh, and to the sense that the uh, finance committee was appointed by the moderator who's elected and represented town meeting, which is an elected body, it was really four, four, four elected boards. Uh, I think that the town manager uh, generally respected that process, and that's what was then put forward to town meeting. And we looked at, um, I've looked at the last couple of town meeting warrants, and uh, the motions that were made at each of those town meetings was actually a motion by the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And so they moved their own report items. and. Uh, that's how the process then went to town meeting and the discussion then followed from that. Uh, so that, that was my experience working with the committee. Councillor Brewer. So I spent less time on the Joint Capital Planning Committee altogether than Mr. Steinberg did on purpose because I didn't want to be there. And the I had done it as a school committee member because again, it was two, 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 and two. And two. So there was the finance committee that, of course, wasn't elected the same way the school committee and library trustees were. 
just a couple of additions to that very helpful explanation Mr. Steinberg just gave. It, this body, um, Ms. Griesmer actually probably knows exactly when this body was created and is not as old as the 1970s. It's actually much newer than that and we were actually way ahead of our time when we developed this in this town. This is not something that we've been doing since 1954 or 1970. It's something we've only been doing since the 80s. Late 80s. And many other communities have started to follow us because they realize, wow, we don't have a plan and we have a plan and we have a process and the process has been refined over right. time. The, pro the plan, the process used to be that staff basically said, this is the stuff we need, and had already talked with the town manager and the finance director, and there was some jockeying around that happened at meetings. Eventually, there became a more clear process, which now has even gone so far as to include community members being able to apply into the joint capital planning process, which had not been possible before. It was that they always had to get funneled through basically staff because the select board didn't bring proposals to the joint capital planning committee. The school committee didn't bring proposals to the joint capital planning committee. They had it as a school committee joint but they had as a school committee capital budget. So that wasn't where proposals arose that normally, it was where proposals were vetted. And one of the reasons I learned I wanted to avoid it is I didn't really want to hear the presentation about lawnmowers because I was fine with the people making that decision in concert with all the other decisions that were having to be made. I know that at town meetings, sometimes people wanted to hear grave details about lawnmowers, but I was willing to say, uh, people on joint capital planning heard that presentation, saw the paperwork that that mower is going to last five or ten years. I'm fine with that. So I think that what we look at when we're sending people to this, which did used to have equal numbers of people as opposed to odd numbers that we're very concerned about now, is that it's something that will report back to us to say, council, these are the things that are priorities in the town, and this is what we're hearing when we're at these meetings, and then we'll tell our representatives to joint capital, hey, go back and tell them that we have to put more money into roads, or we have to put more money into schools, or we have to do something with this. So it's a conduit back and forth, rather than we us asking, for example, the director of public works through the town manager to come here and explain to us why he needs a lawnmower. So it, it is a place where those decisions are vetted in a different way and then brought back to the full body. And I appreciate the concept of, well, we don't have the same kind of executive and the same kind of legislative body, so how can we make it equal? And I don't have a good answer to that. Councillor Haneke. Um, Councillor Brewer just gave me a potential solution during her speech. Um, she mentioned that at current, potentially currently, correct me if I'm wrong, or before this transition, there were community members on the JCPC or had thought about bringing them in. We could put a seventh member on that is a resident of Amherst and that would give us our um, odd number of people if we add one community member into the mix. Councillor Brewer, would you clarify that, please? I'm sorry, I did make that confusing. There has never been, to the best of my knowledge, a non-elected or appointed official on that body. However, there, what there was is just a year ago, there was a new process where the, a community member could bring a proposal through the application process that is normally confined to staff, whether it's school staff, library staff, or town staff. It's normally staff who turn in all the proposals. It's not like block grant advisory where all kinds of agencies turn things in as well as the town. It's always just been town government, which of course is full of elected and appointed officials that people have hired and elected to do those things. But so if you put somebody from the outside on there, that is obviously an option and something that's been talked about elsewhere, but it's a very new process to even allow them to apply without basically the past, you used, that person would have to convince a staff member to put in that application. Councillor Steinberg. Just to add to that, I think that um, I agree with what Ms. Brewer said is the process, and that was the thought of the um, Charter Commission, as I understand it, for creating the participatory uh, budget commission, uh, which would also be an avenue for citizens to be able to get 
capital items under consideration that were not in consideration before. So it was it was really intended the same way. Other comments on this? So one comment has been that instead of making it six, we would make it eight, and that instead of there being two people from the council, there would be four people, two of them from finance, two from, from the town council. And then the other option that has been thrown out is the idea that we keep it as six members who are from elected bodies, two, two, and two, and one member from the community. And then, of course, it's leaving it as it stands. But the primary discussion has been about what's its function, who it works with, and the fact that ultimately all of the decisions or recommendations, if you will, of this body uh, come back to the town council for approval anyway. Other comments? Councillor didn't, I'm sorry, Councillor DeAngelis. Thank you. Um, I uh, can see the reasoning behind having one community member, but if we think about some of the divisions that have been created over the last couple of years in town, it might be good to, either, to have none or um, three. Um, so that we maintain oddness. Um, but it seems to me that I, th I could see the public um, residents of Amherst getting really uh, distrustful and antsy. You know, you picked my person and you didn't pick so-and-so, and so I'm concerned about that. Councillor Steinberger. One reason that it might be all right to have an even number on this particular committee is that if it was split three and three on a vote, that would be informative to the town manager. The town manager is the next step and makes the decision on where to go and what is actually going to be presented to the council. I might also add that if you look at the way the six people vote, even on a four two vote could be instructive. <laughs> Additional comments, observations. Yes, Councilor Brewer. I would prefer not to put a member of the public on this body. I think that a member of the public is a great idea, or two or three, on many bodies, but this would not be the one. Um, and I also think we should not discard as uncomfortable as it feels in many respects, since our executive and legislative bodies have changed, and I believe that as counselors, we feel grave responsibility, just as the select board when it was an executive and the town manager as an executive, feel great responsibility and grave responsibility for the library capital improvements and the school capital improvements, that it doesn't make sense to confine ourselves to two seats, as long as we are not just there to promote town hall oh, plus DPW plus fire things. Right. We are looking at the big picture. This is the place to look at the big picture. So I actually do like the idea of two town council finance committee members and two councilors that are not on the finance committee, plus still the two library trustees, plus still the two school committee members. And in all reality, I'm not convinced, although it would be harder for those bodies because they're five uh, member bodies, five and seven member so, bodies, yeah, to send more people to JCPC. They're not confined to two either. No, they are not. So that would be two counselors, two finance com committee people who would be counselors, and as well as two other town counselors. Councilor Haneke. So as the charge is written, the library trustees and the school committee would be confined to two because the charge says two from each appointing authority. We could change the charge. Um, to more from each one. Um, I caution an even number. The charter, and I know <laughs> I'm one of the ones that wrote it, so I, I have a, have a um, 
fault for some of this, I guess. It says all appointed multiple member bodies when established shall be composed of an odd number of members. It doesn't actually give us the option or any exceptions. So I, I'm hesitant at such an early stage of the adoption of the charter to actually go against that sort of stringent all must be odd numbers. That could mean we could put three counselors on it and two from the other two bodies. Um, right. That's another possibility. Councillor Ross. Uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to support what Councillor Haneke uh, said uh, because we do have this in the charter, these uniform rules, it, it makes sense to abide by them. Um, and so if we do have to get to an odd number, it would make sense that the additional person would come from the council, um, but at least under that, uh, the council alone would not hold a majority um, or, or even an even number. They would need to be, uh, it, you know, they, they couldn't have a, a majority vote on just the council alone. Other comments? All right, we have a motion on the floor. Do I hear an amendment to that motion? Councillor Haneke. Councillor Ryan. I'd like to propose to amend that we would have three members from the council. So it would read seven. Seven members in total. Total, three. two from each of the school committee and the library, and three from the council. Is there a second? Um, can I do a um, friendly amendment? Yes. That of the three from the council, two are from the finance committee and one is not from the finance committee. Mm. Okay. And is there a second? Councillor Schwartz? Second. That was Councillor Schwartz. Yes, Councillor Haneke. So I actually don't like that friendly amendment. I, I, I would like to leave it up to us, depending on other things, to decide whether two are from the Finance Committee and one is from the Non-Finance Committee, or whether it goes the other way around. We just created 15 spots on committees, and of the 15 plus, 15 there, this is another three, so that's 18. There's one on the participatory budgeting is 19, and two on the BCG was 20, and that doesn't even include the committee we shelved for now, and it doesn't include the bylaw review committee or the rules and procedures committee, which is another. So we're almost up to potentially 30 members needed for committees. Um, so it might be, and with the finance committee already having of their five members, potentially four or five other memberships, it, it might be good to leave that flexibility in where one versus two come from. Can I just mention that the way that we passed the motion for the Finance Committee was to say no more than two counselors, so it could allow either one or two. Um, so I guess we have a friendly amendment on the floor. Any more discussion on that? Um, I think we need to either make it a real amendment or we need to go back to the original one. And the real amendment would be a total of seven people, two from the school committee, two from the library, um, and three from the council, two of which would be from the finance committee and one from another committee, or just one from the council. So that's the actual motion, to, the amendment. Is there a second to that? Okay, Andy. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> Councillor Steinberg seconded. Um, and further discussion, Councillor Brewer. 
I don't, I'm, I've lost a little track of where we are in terms of, I'm fine with us working on the voting members, but I actually did still have a comment about the charge wording itself, you know, the authority membership staff support report section. And so did you want to include that? Because that's not, is the motion as it's written with the change to the number of voting members? I or think, we, sh I think we should stick to the amendment on the voting members, okay? Any further discussion on the amendment to the voting members? Councilor Haneke. Before we vote, because it looks like there isn't any, I just want to confirm the amendment includes that two must come from the Finance Committee? That is the way the amendment reads. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Councilor Ryan. I hear uh, Councilor Haneke's uh, concern and um, perfectly willing to uh, change it or withdraw it. Um, if we're going to require two members from the Finance Committee, um, that seems to be adding, uh, my understanding of her concern is that adds uh, further um, weight, further uh, duties, so perhaps we should leave it um, as we originally had it, with just um, three members and leave it at that and not require the two of them be from the Finance Committee. Does that make things worse or better? So, I think we, rather than withdraw, we should vote, okay? So we're voting on the amendment. The amendment at this point is that it would be seven members, two from the school committee, two from the library, and three from the council, two of whom would be from the finance committee, and one of whom would be from the council. It's, yes. And this is the amendment specifically not, the third member is specifically not from. It's totally the amendment. Councilor Brewer. I don't think we have any control over how many school committee members or library trustees are actually on this. That's not under our purview. No more than five. Is it? Um, I guess I need to ask whether this is in the charter. Not that I'm aware of. Yes, Councilor Brewer. Exactly. That's why membership says dot, dot, dot <laughs> under that section is it says a composed at a minimum representatives from. Mm -hmm. It does not say how many. And so I, I guess so the, the way I'm feeling about this is that we could go ahead and say this, but if and, and vote this and whichever variation of this we're doing. Mm -hmm. But if the library trustees or the school committee come back and say, we don't think that's fair, then they should be talking to the president and the town manager about right. that because we really can't, we can't control in this case how many of them are serving on this. This is a body that's advisory, that's advisory to the town manager. It does not say how many of any of us and so they could be having the same argument back at their meeting as to how many people they want to send. Okay. Councilor Haneke. So that would then bring up the question, do we even have the authority to really do a committee charge or is it the town manager's authority to form the JCPC per the charter? Mr. Bachman. So I don't think there's a clear answer to this, but I think I go back to when our, one of our early trainings uh, where the town administrator from Franklin said when, there's, when, it's, when, when something falls into nobody's category, it falls into the town council's category. <laughs> so you, I'm, you could make the judgment that since it's unclear that we're taking on the responsibility mm -hmm. to make the call on this one. Okay. Um, so we are back to the amendment to the original motion. The original, the amendment is for seven members, two from the schools, two from the library, three from the council, two of which will be finance committee and one other one. Any further discussion? Let's take a, then I call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? One, 
Your hands up or not? <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. Opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that can't be right. <laughs> Too many. It was five. Sorry. It's been solved. It's five, and now we have an even number of council members. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, the motion passes. And so we're back to the original motion, which is the charge. Is there any further discussion on the charge? Councilor Brewer. I'm sorry, I do have a point about the charge, but I also have a point for our minutes. Our minutes are required as I understand it, although our recent draft ones do not. When we do not have a unanimous vote, it requires to name us. And I wondered if we actually okay. did that in such a way that the clerk is probably super speedy and caught that, but I'm not sure they caught who the eight and, the, and who the five was. Would you like us to record that vote? <laughs> okay, would you call the names on the, for yes in favor, no against? I'm gonna need to see hands again. Okay, all right, all those in favor. And those opposed. Thank you, Councillor Brewer. Okay, we're back to the original motion. Is there any further discussion, Councillor Brewer? So it's always a challenge with the charges like this and with the charter, how much do we repeat? And we talked about that rules of procedure. We'll talk about it again tomorrow at rules of procedure. But I'm a little uncomfortable with leaving reports at no later than May 1, the town manager shall prepare. And because the rest of that whole section in the charter is important too. It talks about a public forum that has to be held, which the town council may well be involved in trying to get people excited about coming to. And it also talks about how the town council actually adopts <coughs> the joint capital plan. So I, I think we either need less or we need more. Comment on that. Councillor Haneke. We could easily just say reports. Reports shall be in conformity to section 5.7 of the charter, period. And then that might cover it. And I go back to, and I'm going to take my leeway to say something else. I go back to the thing, the item I mentioned before, which is there seemed to be no purpose. And that seems to be because there is no actual purpose section in this draft charge. Um, so I recommend we take the last sentence of the authority section that reads, the Joint Capital Planning Committee shall advise the town manager on the creation of the program and make that the purpose. I need to ask clarification. Are you saying under reports that we strike everything that is there and just say reports consistent with section 5.4 of the charter? 5.7, yes. 5.7. Reports okay. consistent with section 5.7 of the charter. Okay, so the two changes, not going back to the members, but the two changes, one is to move purpose, um, have it be the last sentence of authority, which they would make the purpose, the Joint Capital Planning Committee shall advise the town manager on the creation of the program. Then you would have authority after that, membership, staff, and under reports, you would strike everything there and just say reports consistent with 5.7 of the, section 5.7 of the charter. Mm. Councilor Pam. I could see that for now, but I always think it's nice to print things out. I mean, I, I hate to have documents which keep referring me to someplace else. Okay. Um, but for now, that's a shorthand way of saying what would go there. And we can then include it. Yeah. Okay. Other comments? All right, so the full motion 
before the council is, I'm sorry, Councillor Hanneke. I was just gonna suggest with Councillor Pam's suggestion that the second page of the committee charge just print the entire section 5.7 of the charter, just for informational purposes, just stick it in there. Okay. Count, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bachelman. Just one clarification, under membership, do you want that to be spelled out in terms of where the members are coming from? Because this is just quotes the charter in, in essence. Would you I think want? yes. So you say two members from the Light Board of Library Trustees, two members from the school committee, three members from the town council, two of which shall be members of the finance committee. Uh, no, actually, under membership, I would leave it as you have it. Okay. The number of voting members above is that where is we made the understood. edit. Thank you. Okay, so the changes as they now stand to this for the entire motion. One is under number of voting members. It says seven, and it goes on to talk about them from school committee, library, and three from the council, two of which will be from the finance committee. The other second change is to create a section called purpose, and that has the joint capital planning committee shall advise the town manager on the creation of the program. Under authority, it's the two sentences that remain there. And then under report for the time being, it says reports consistent with section 5.7 of the charter. The actual reports, that actual section 5.7 would be attached to the charge, yes. Councillor Steinberg. So I guess the um, thing that concerns me is that what we've now done is take it, is use the term capital improvement program, which was in one place, and then we did have it defined later. We've now taken the definition of what the capital improvement program is and eliminated that so that at no point are we as a council saying what the capital improvement program is. If you read that sentence, uh, it's very clear as to what each part of it is. Um, and uh, there's one other thing that I was just going to throw in for informational purposes and how I thought about this all along is actually one of the things that uh, JCPC did in recent years is to move from, um, to 10 years for to make it a 10-year plan. And uh, I think it's okay to say next five fiscal years because if it continues to do a 10-year plan, you know, five, to reporting on more than five is not inconsistent. The, the five, however, is what's in the charter, right? Correct. Okay. So they can still do a 10-year. It's just that they have to do at least five. Correct. Okay. I want to go back to your first point, though. And would you further explain that or... Well, right now you've, we've created a purpose, and the purpose is the town manager is responsible for creating the capital improvement program. And then we say the JCPC will advise on the creation of the program, but we've taken out the part of the charge that defined what a capital improvement program is, which we had incorporated into the report section it probably all along deserved to be up at the top, but I was just raising the question for my fellow counselors before they vote on this mm -hmm. as to whether they really want to eliminate this part of it that was defining what a capital improvement program is. I, I hear you, Councillor Ryan. In uh, the Charter 5.7, um, letter B, um, word for word, is included um, that capital program description. Um, though I agree with Councilor Steinberg, it would be very helpful to have it spelled out here. It actually, assuming we do under reports have consistent with 5.7 of the charter, um, the description is in 5.7 of the charter. So 
the suggestion is under reports to say reports cons consistent with 5.7 of the charter and then leave the description there. No, I, excuse me, I, I think the suggestion was that paragraph defines what a capital improvement program is, so move it up to purpose. Okay. It goes with the capital improvement program is the following, okay. and, then, and then the reports okay. can be the this, this section. Yes, okay, so in this case, the suggestion is, Purpose would begin with the sentence, the Joint Capital Planning Committee shall advise the town manager on the creation of the capital improvement program, and then take from below, the, in the first paragraph of reports, take that entire section and move it up under purpose. And then under reports, say reports consistent with 5.7 of the charter, and including no later than May 1. That now makes sense, Councilor Brewer. Except for the not later than May one part, still goes away because reports is consistent with five point seven. Okay. The next section is moved up, and the part that starts not later than has been incorporated by reference to the five point seven because that way it also covers the adoption, the public forum, and all that jazz. Okay. So you could strike that last sentence. Okay, let me try a summary of, the, of this again. We already talked about the number of voting members changing to seven. We've created a purpose which starts with the Joint Capital Planning Committee shall advise the town manager on the creation of the program, of the capital improvement program, excuse me. And under that, you will take the first paragraph under reports and move it up under purpose. The next section would be authority, then membership, then staff, support, and under reports, you would just say reports consistent with 5.7 of the charter. Any other questions, suggestions? Councilor Haneke. Just one Scrivener's error. Under authority, the word call should probably be calls. Section 5.7B of the Amherst Home Rule Charter calls for the creation of. Thank you. Okay, are there any other changes, corrections, additions, movements? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? That is unanimous, thank you. We're moving on to budget coordinating group. Again, this is a part of the charter. Do I hear a motion to approve the draft committee charge for the budget coordinating group? Remember, we can do comments and rearranging later. Yes. Councilor Ryan has moved. Do I have a second? Councilor Ross has seconded. Comments, rearrangements, discussion. <laughs> Councilor Haneke. I find it very strange we'd be passing a charge that does not actually have a number of members. Mm. At all. Okay. Councillor DeAngelis. I don't think we need a number there. Um, we're not setting the size of the group, and the group works by consensus, which is, uh, means that we don't have voting members. Interesting. Additional comment? Councillor ha Councillor Haneke. So does that mean the Madam President gets to decide how many members get appointed to this? 
because we're not setting as a council how many members there are? I, I guess I find it very strange that we wouldn't, as a council, be saying this is how many members we're going to have. Even if we don't set it for the other two bodies, that we wouldn't be setting it for ourselves as a group. Councillor I, I totally agree. You know, I, I looked at this and I, all we know is it's as many as two from finance. It could be as few as one. But, you know, just, just putting a number in will help us at least know when this needs to meet, how many people are going. We left it no more than two. Councillor Brewer. So we left it no more than two in our finance committee charter. From the finance because committee, of course, that's correct. The charter is, is not, does not require a specific number. One of the things I have not understood about the charter, and perhaps someone can enlighten me, is that I appreciate that we just copied verbatim what it says, but it says here to develop coordinated budget guidelines. That is not something the budget coordinating group used to do under the former town government act. And so I don't know what those words mean, and if I'm in this context. And once we know that, I think it'll give us a better sense of how many people need to be working on doing it, and if, in fact, that might require votes then, because when the select board issued budget guidelines, they voted on it. And when the finance committee issued budget guidelines, they voted on it. And so I appreciate that these are the words in the charter, but maybe the charter commission could elaborate a little on what that was meant, because it was more talking about needs and calendar, and it was substantive conversation about needs, but it wasn't issuing guidelines in the same way that we've previously issued guidelines. Okay. The question is on the table. I'm going to look to others who have more knowledge of discussions. Councillor Haneke. So if my memory is serving me correctly, um, that sentence was to indicate the same duties that the finance committee sort of and the select board sort of served in developing budget, coordinated budget guidelines. Um, so yeah, it would, I guess, go beyond what the BCG, previous BCG did. Um, but I believe that's why it was put in there from my memory was so that this new group since there wasn't another place to really do that at this, as we were as a charter commission looking at where would those coordinated budget guidelines potentially come from, it, this seemed like the most logical spot to put not only that conversation but potential guidelines. Other comments? interpretations, thoughts. <laughs> Councillor Steinberg. I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, but it's finance. In this oh, no, 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 I was going to call on you even <laughs> if you didn't offer <laughs> so. Since I've looked. Um, I, I actually am having a little bit more problems with the budget coordinating group and trying to understand what the intent was of the Charter Commission, which is why I was hoping to hear from somebody on the Charter Commission first. The budget coordinating group served a function that really related um, in its history to more town meeting focused purposes and it did not develop guidelines. Um, and uh, to be as direct as I can and as brief as I can, there was a period of time when um, there was um, sort of competing budget requests where uh, the uh, other bodies were, that were, uh, are now represented on budget coordinating group were going to town meeting and making counter proposals to what the finance committee budget had come out with. And in order to try and keep that from um, getting to town meeting if we could avoid it. Um, there was an effort to create a budget coordinating group which would bring um, all of these people together to talk by consensus so that instead of going straight to town meeting and saying, 
gee, I'm not happy and I need to make this amendment to the Finance Committee proposed budget, the budget coordinating group was a place to take it to and try and see if they could achieve consensus and then the Finance Committee could choose or not and always to choose to act accordingly. Uh, that's really very different from the process that I think we're going into now and therefore I was a little bit at a loss um, as to how to take the words budget coordinating group and translate it into what um, we're going to do in operation. And I sort of have this feeling that on this one, it's gonna be a question that is gonna evolve into something that's really meaningful or evolve into something that never meets because it doesn't have a purpose. Um, and we don't know until we try. Okay, Councillor DeAngelis. I was wondering if the, uh, Mr. Bachelman, you could uh, comment on this committee and how you see it. Mr. Bachelman. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think Mr. Steinberg and Ms. Brewer have a lot more experience than I have with it, but it seemed my brief two years experience here is that it's, it is a, uh, a group that would get together from that represented all of the people who had budgets and they would talk about the needs and um, requirements for their uh, operations and that's where information is basically shared it was really more of a sharing opportunity versus a directive operation Councilor Steinberg yeah and just to follow up on this so what would happen then is that um, if a need was identified that a budget develop, somebody developing a budget, either the superintendent, the library director, the town manager <coughs> felt was something that they really needed but was unable to put into it, that they would have a place to go and say, I've got this real problem because I really need this additional um, expense covered, um, or, and these are the operational consequences of not doing it, and it would give, um, the opportunity for BCG to say, oh, the governor recommended a little bit more in, its, um, in his budget for uh, local aid, or the um, assessor might come in and say, hey, we've got more buildings coming online than I thought, and so that uh, my estimation that I made in October for the um, uh, the amount of new growth um, is greater than it was, and that it was a place where all of that could be talked about and see if um, a consensus could fall out of all of that new information uh, and uh, that it could be done in an orderly way. Further conversation on this? This sounds like it's part of making the plane while you're flying, so. Um, I just think that we have to think about some of this as being to be defined as we move on. Is there further conversation on this? Um, I do have a question and that is, does the council want to um, leave what was said under finance as our relationship to this committee or do we want to state a number? We sit under finance no more than two. We can let that stand and that's fine. And then as it forms, we may bring it back to the committee and decide we have to change. Councilor Haneke. Could I ask those members who have experience with the committee what the normal or traditional makeup of this committee was in terms of numbers? It was, all, it was pretty similar to um, what we've described for JCPC as far as elected and board members. Uh, it was two from each of um, the committees, including the Finance Committee. And then uh, because it was consensus and you weren't worrying about voting, other people who would traditionally come are the town manager, the finance director, the um, superintendent of schools would frequently come and uh, is always the business manager of the school who's sort of their finance director. Uh, 
the library generally only had the library director there. Um, and as I said, since there was a consensus discussion that really was trying, it, it never came around to being a significant issue. Okay. Councilor Brewer. So one of the things that actually was really useful for for a while was calendaring, which I know sounds really simple, but just having done the doodle polls, maybe you'll appreciate that it wasn't quite that simple. Because of when the Town Government Act said different things had to happen and the library trustees had to do their things separately because they went directly to the legislative body, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't go through the town manager as it does under the new system. So it, it can't be exactly parallel, and that, but that also means that because it says very clearly in the charter that the library and the schools have to get their budgets to the town manager, there's no longer a calendar coordinating function there. I mean, they just have to do it at that period of time rather than it being various places. It was a helpful place for it to not just be staff talking about things and for elected officials to be talking about things. My problem, you know, on the one hand, I'm like kind of thinking, oh, I don't really need this anymore. Um, the second part of what Mr. Steinberg said earlier, except for the fact that, you know, it's written in the charter that we're supposed to have it and it says budgetary guidelines and that really, or coordinated budget guidelines. And I, I'm trying to understand if we would expect this body to develop some coordinated budget guidelines yet this year for this budget, or if it's something we just put off, or where we want to go with that, because it is different. Um, Mr. Bockelman, do you want to comment on the guidelines for this year? Uh, we already have guidelines from back in October. That's what we're operating under. Right. So are there further discussion about this committee? Councillor Haneke. I would suggest eliminating in the top half the section or line that says number of voting members, just eliminate that completely. Um, the membership below says that we really only have the authority to designate at all our own membership because this one's slightly worded slightly different than the other than the JCPC committee, That's representatives correct. of the elementary regional schools as designated by the school committee and regional school committee. We can't change that. We can't tell them how many they get to or who. Right. Um, so we can designate other persons um, and we can designate our own representatives. So we might want to add, get rid of the number of voting members line and just write in number of town councilors or something. Councillor DeAngelis. I agree about writing in the number of councillors, but I also feel like we need to make a statement that this group works by consensus. Um, okay, so. just trying to look at where we want to add those in. Council I think you could, Shane. if we change it to number of voting to number of town councilors and put a number there, the work group works by consensus could go right in the membership section that you've got. You have it be a final clause on it. So we don't need to add that in. We would just change number of town councilors and decide on what we want. And there would, yes, Councilor Brewer? No. No. And the reason I disagree is because we need these templates to look the same. Yeah. Every time we look at a committee charge, it needs to look the same. So it needs to say number of voting members, and then we can write as many lines in there as we want that explain we only have the authority over the council, because that is absolutely no different than JCPC. Right. JCPC, we said number of voting members, and we even decided how many the other committees had. Um, but we really need, I mean, we can change the convention from number of voting members to something else, but 
we need our committee charges to say number of voting members on them. And then I think it's perfectly fine if it doesn't look as equal in terms of just explaining exactly what Ms. Haneke and Ms. Shane have said, in term, and also Ms. DeAngelis, about saying it's consensus that they're not voting members. Just, I know it looks weird the way it says it right now, but I do, I'm really opposed to changing the template itself. Okay, so that at this point, in order to stay consistent, it would say number of voting members, um, and we would leave it blank. What I meant was you could literally fill in all those words that people just said. It's just a different set of words than the words that are here right now. Councillor Haneke. Given the late hour, I'm wondering if we send this back to Madam President for revision and bringing back at our next meeting since there doesn't seem to be a huge um, priority or urgency on this one. I agree. So we're going to table the motion, okay? I think we need to vote to do that. Oh. So I'll make a motion to table. All those in favor? Unanimous, okay. Um, we're going under rules of procedure committee. I hope that we can get this done because the committee's meeting tomorrow. <laughs> On the other hand, they seem to already know what their assignments are, so. Do I hear a motion to adopt this charge? So moved. Um, Councillor Haneke moved and second. Councillor Schwartz. Discussion? Councillor Haneke. I move to strike the last sentence of the reports line that says said rules can be referred to this committee or a future committee for changes and additions. I believe once those rules are passed, the committee will be disbanded. So it's not necessary. And this would then go to the standing committee of the council. Okay, so the, mo so it, the idea is to strike the line said rules can be deferred to the committee or a future committee for changes in addition. Discussion, Councilor Brewer? Um, if we are, we are making additional edits to this yes. or on that particular issue, okay. So the reference, when it says June 1, 2019, that needs to reference the charter 10.7 PI or something like that, that shows that it has to be done within six months. The charter says that. Whereas the date of February 1 is a made up date, that's something that that's was right. chosen by this body and I would recommend that we change it to, oh, and, and yeah. We can leave that actually as it is, but the June 1 date is actually, is actually not the date, it says six months and so we need to change that one to May 31st. Yes, I can read my own scribbles that are my notes here. So yes, the charter says six months, so we should reference the charter 10.7 P Roman numeral I or whatever it is and say May 31st because the first is a Sunday as I recall. And I'm <coughs> fine with it saying February 1, 2019 because that's what we discussed, but that doesn't have a charter reference. Right. <laughs> so the only changes of, as I hear them are um, the under reports, the second sentence, we would change it to no later than May 31st, 2019. We'd cite the section of the charter that claim, that says it has to be done within th six months. And we would strike the last sentence, said rules can be referred to this committee or a future committee for changes in addition. Councillor Haneke. I hesitate to do this, but it's a multiple member body and it's an even number. Should we be changing that? <laughs> um, 
I have a suggestion. Either one of you can drop out or, one, or, or somebody else can add. We either change it to three or we go to five. Hmm. Remember, this is ad hoc. It's not standing and it's not permanent. You're <laughs> Councillor Bellman. I can volunteer to. I, I can join if if we do decide to go that route. Yes. We passed this as a committee of four. We now need to amend it as a committee of five. And we would add for this purpose that we don't normally appoint committees this way. In the future, we won't. We would add to it, Councillor Balmill. Might be easier to change four into an odd number. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> Thanks. I need one at this hour since it's five minutes to ten. Um, okay. So it's five. Is there any further discussion? Call a question. Yes. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Councilor Brewer. I'm sorry, I overlooked the fact that on the front they put six months and it says June 1, so it should needs to say May 31st to match the back so that no one wonders why they're two different dates. Okay, thank you. Meetings at seven o'clock tomorrow night. No, just no. Um, the next item is the town is the regular meeting schedule. Let me just point out we voted on this before. There have been some changes. Uh, we did look up the date for um, Rosh Hashanah, and it actually begins the next day at sundown. Yom Kippur. No, it, it begins on the seventh. The calendars always give the day. All Jewish holidays start the night before, even though yeah. the calendars don't do it. Um, I, I, I did check my calendar. Okay. Then we will be changing that, but mm. I'd still like to go ahead and vote the calendar, and we will make changes as needed. And the reason I want to vote the calendar is so that we can start scheduling things into this calendar, if that would be okay. So... Do I hear a motion to accept the calendar? Uh, Councilor Ryan, a second. Second. Councilor Shane. All those in favor? Or any further discussion? All those in favor? Councilor Brewer. <laughs> it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. I, I didn't vote. Oh, I'm sorry. It's in the calendar, it goes here, but this is where the holiday starts. That's what yep. the asterisk is about. That's so it is starts on the evening of the 7th. Thank you. Okay. I was looking at some other source, which was obviously not correct. It's the 7th, is, is uh, October. October 7th. Um, so the, um, we have two other items on the agenda. And then very quickly, we have town reports. Since we're not waiting for three more weeks, I would suggest that we try to complete this agenda, okay? Um, so the town manager's report is the first time that the town manager has provided us with a report. It comes to you as the executive branch, not the joint executive branch. And um, are there particular highlights from it, Mr. Bachman? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I will truncate it down. Um, I do want to say that um, thank you for the work you're doing tonight. With the, the work you struggled through tonight is really important because it's laying the foundation for what we're going to be working on in the coming months, in the coming years. Um, just a couple updates. Um, you talked about the Residents Advisory Committee. We'll I'll talk to you more about that next time. The Community Preser uh, Pert Preser Participation Officers 
Uh, we've been meet, meeting and are eager to meet with your new committee um, when that gets appointed. Um, we have about seven applicants for, for the Board of Library, for, for the board, board of License Commissioners, and so I'm hoping that we will have recommendations to you, um, hopefully at your next meeting, which you can then refer to your committee on appointments for consideration. The reason it was important for you to take action on all these items tonight is because you are going to start receiving items from uh, the executive branch to, and you're gonna have to figure out how are we gonna handle it. So um, another key one is that I have a department head that we are in the final stages of interviewing that I would like to transfer to, to convey to the council. Um, there's only, <coughs> excuse me, there's only 14 days for the council to act. I'll try to time it so you have an opportunity to act but it probably won't be where we are in the hiring process. It won't be time for you to refer it to another committee and bring it back. Um, so I apologize for that, but that's just sort of the time frame where we are given the holidays and things like that. Um, it's something that we will educate each other on in terms of department heads and how that's working because when I'm in the process of interviewing and hiring people who are in public positions, um, once their name becomes public to you, it becomes public in their own community, and if that's the situation, it becomes problematic, and I, don't, I try not to lose candidates because of adverse publicity or damage them if they are um, not, if we don't finalize um, our, our, our uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. So, but I have one coming your way, I hope, on that. We have more interviews on Friday on that end. Um, the, um, then there'll be some other items that are gonna come, come your way in January. Uh, you will know that to, on Wednesday night we have a public information meeting on the Station Road Bridge uh, where we will have the consulting engineers uh, along with town staff presenting to the community at uh, 6.30 at the Banks Community Center. You're all welcome to attend. Uh, you will see us making a presentation to you in January because for two reasons. One is you are the um, protectors of the public way. We're re making recommendations to make changes to the public way. That'll be within your realm of activity. How you wanna handle that will be, again, how you, you know, if you wanna do it as a committee of the whole or if you wanna refer it to someone else. The other reason is that I'll be coming to you for an, an appropriation uh, for funds to build the bridge. Uh, this, uh, for the temporary bridge I'm just talking about at this point, Again, there's a process for, uh, in the charter for what you have to do to comply with an additional appropriation. It requires publication and a number of other steps. I would not expect to see that till the end of January, but at that point, there'll be some steps that you have to follow. And um, we'll be looking at how to make this uh, as, as, as uh, efficient as possible, but also to recognize that you, once you have your finance committee up, that'll probably go through your finance committee before it comes back uh, to the full council. Um, other things that will be coming your way um, is the proposal uh, you heard about the town common. I'm anticipating that will be the end of January, early February, uh, because if we want to do that construction at all this year, we would, the council would have to um, be on board with that pretty quickly. Whether you're there or not, I don't know, but we'd like to make the presentation to you and listen to what your reaction is. Um, if you all received notice that the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority uh, did not approve a two proposals that we had submitted, one for the Wildwood School and one for the Fort River School, um, we will be working to get the with the school department to rally around a new some some kind of plan that we can then re-forward into the MSBA. It's a pro process that will have to happen during the spring. So that's something that will be on your uh, agenda coming up in the, in the uh, near future. And uh, in terms of budget, we've been doing budget hearings. Uh, budget hearings in my parlance is that um, the departments come to a team from the town that includes the finance officers and me and other people and they make their presentations on the budget as we start to drill down into the requests and then we, from those requests and what, what, they, what they say they need, we kind of cut it out and put together a budget that we will then be presenting uh, to the Finance Committee of the Council. At the Finance Committee of the Council is where 
those departments will then make their um, presentations to you as well. So there's a lot of work happening. Um, I think in January, we're hoping to do a fair amount of orientation and uh, our department heads are really eager to meet with you and explain all the great work that they're doing. We're eager to show you the facilities that the town has and give, give you um, opportunities to tour them. I'm really happy that the president has sought um, the agreement of the council to hold a retreat of some sort so you can establish your goals. From your goals flows my work plan. From my work plan flows the work of the town departments. So it's really important for the council to say, here are our top priorities. Um, and, if, and I appreciate the time that you're going to be able to put into that because it's a, another Saturday that you're going to have to devote to this job that you've taken on. Um, I'm working on different ways to help um, uh, keep the council informed um, on anything that's emergency. You'll get a quick email from me. Um, but on a more regular basis, and I'm not sure if that's a weekly email or if it's a more detailed report to your council meetings, I'm, I'm still looking at different models for how that's, that has been done in other communities. Um, so that's all I have, and I'm here for any questions that you may have. Are there any questions at this time? Okay. Um, then I'd like to move to the uh, approval of minutes. Again, this is the first time that we've received minutes. Um, I want to note a couple things on them as you look at them. First of all, um, we will be adding a link at the top of the minutes so that anybody who wants to actually go and view the full video of the council meeting, they will be able to do so. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? Councilor Shane has moved, second. Councilor Schwartz seconded. Questions, additions, yes. Councilor Haneke. So the charter requires all votes of the council to be set forth by each member's vote. So the vote that sells in the meeting doesn't have to be roll call, but the minutes have to show how each member actually voted. The current minutes that were proposed to us do not. So I would hope that, well, they'll, it, it will need to be added in. Okay, uh, so we will need I to think, amend them to yes, add in that. to add in all the votes. I also noticed that unanimous votes were referred to two different ways in the minutes. It would be good to be consistent. Sometimes it was set out 13-0, and sometimes it was set out just unanimous. Um, so consistency, mm -hmm. I think, would be good in that one. Okay. Are there any, yes, Councillor Brewer. Somewhere here in this pile of paper, it's, it mentions um, the various councillor informal remarks that were made, and I know that I made some, and so my name should be added to that list. Um, do you have a specific? Yeah, there's, a, there's a list on the minutes that says councillor remarks were made by blah, 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 and as I recall, two of us passed, but I certainly spoke. There's a long list there. It's not in alphabetical order. It's perhaps in order of when we spoke. And I don't know. It's section two. Got it. Okay, thank you. Are there other changes or additions? I'm going to ask for a motion to defer approval so that we see the minutes again uh, with the record of the voting, and et cetera. Second. Okay, Councilor Steinberg removed and Councilor Ryan seconded. All those in favor? Yeah, it's unanimous. We have two quick council reports or comments. Um, are there are no committee reports, obviously. Um, are there any future agenda items that people want to note at this time? Okay. The, and I'm council sorry, comments, Mr. Councilor Steinberg? Yeah, I had... Uh been asked to uh, just report briefly on where we are with the follow-up to the four towns meeting that 
Some of you attended, not everybody was able to attend. Uh, the town manager sent a link to the PowerPoint. Um, and if anybody who's looked at the link and has questions uh, was not at the meeting, they should certainly contact one of us who was there. Um, to be real brief because of the hour, uh, the major discussion was, of course, about the FY20 process. Um, and I should note that the process for a regional budget is going to have to be out of sync with the rest of our budget process. We actually knew that, and there's a provision in the charter that allows us to consider portions of budgets for um, exceptional reasons, and this is one out of that uh, particular sequence. Uh, because it, uh, the rest of the towns deal with town meeting schedules and therefore are adopting the regional budget at the beginning of May. And if we're going to be a participant and not, then we have to be in that timeline. The big problem was um, the, 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 the assessment methodology. There were two different questions. One is the budget and the other is the assessment method. And uh, they do tie together because when the, you have to put them both together to figure out how much money we're going to be assessed as a single member community. And uh, that, um, so, so that they're both factors, but I can't go into that without going into more time than I want to tonight. Um, the um, problem with the assessment methodology was is that all of the assessment methods were creating some uncertainty or some concerns for each member of town. There was no one that everybody could jump to that day and say, hey, this is the perfect method. Uh, so that the outcome of the meeting was that uh, we get some sort of um, small and in, informal group together from the four towns to see if we can come up with a solution for the year ahead. Um, the superintendent has asked to convene such a committee and is convening the committee, the, the committee to meet on Friday morning. Um, the president has asked that I serve on that committee. Um, and uh, I think that uh, um, and I will, of course, report back to you as we go along. But uh, the uh, ability to go into any more depth without keeping us here all night precludes me from going further. Any questions? All right, then I have one other uh, thing. First of all, I'd like to just observe or notice that the League of Women Voters has begun their observer corps, and we've now had Three meetings. Three weeks, yes. I also want to uh, share with you something I'm very pleased to announce, and that is the League of Women Voters of Amherst, Amherst Media, and former Mass Senate, State Senate President Stan Rosenberg have teamed up for what will be called Byline by Stan Rosenberg, an issues oriented topical local government news program. Again, this helps create that. Um, transparency and reaching out. Byline will tackle town, regional, and state news topics as Rosenberg interviews players in local and state government. It will premiere on Friday, January 4th at 8 p.m. on Channel 17 and also be available online. And then it will be rebroadcast every Monday at 6 p.m. prior to the start of the town council meetings. And each of you will be invited to be interviewed at some point in the near future. So any topics uh, not reasonably anticipated by the president? Council Brewer. It actually should probably have been under future agenda or some other place. Um, I don't believe we just discussed at all publicly how you're going to make assignments to all these committees, some of which need to start doing work almost immediately in January. Um, I'll be glad to describe that, okay. Uh, first of all, I, as I meet with uh, Town Manager Bachman, he and I have agreed to make sure we have as complete a list as we can possibly compile, and those appointments I need to make. Obviously, those of the standing committees that we just approved tonight are key on my mind. I will be in touch with each of you by email, individually, not as a group, 
and ask you to respond to me individually. And after putting together my matrix on an Excel spreadsheet, if I need to, I will be back to consult with each of you as to whether or not the committees that you would like to be on are in fact the committees that I will be appointing you to. And my goal is to do all of that between now and before we meet on January 7th. Is that? Yes, Councilor Pam. What, what do we do if we want to be on the committee that has no name? Um, I'll leave a blank and you can fill in the name and then you can say you'd like to be on that committee. Thank you. Good. Um, thank you for that question. <laughs> Other comments, questions? Yes, Councilor. Um, I have a question. Do these commit, I mean, what will be the time when these committees uh, meet? Do they have to be in the evening or could they be in the mornings? As well? It needs to be agreed upon by the members of the committee. Any other questions? Yes. Councillor Pam. Do we have a date for the retreat? We are looking at the three dates, and unfortunately at this point we don't have a full um, number of people who can be there for any one time. So I plan to reach out and see if there's any way to resolve that and get that back to you as soon as I can. We are in a similar situation, unfortunately, uh, with the idea of the various tours and meetings with town departments, which we have polled for. And what I have suggested to uh, Mr. Valkelman is that we go ahead with the best dates we can find. We do a recording so that people can, in fact, watch those meetings if you are unable to be here. Yes, Council. Could Council you give Angels. us uh, the three dates, the possible three dates for the retreat? So. Yes, they were the ones that we pulled for. They were Saturday. Um, I have to pull up a calendar real fast. Um, they are Saturday, um, January 26th, February 2nd, and February 9th. Okay. Are there any other questions? Comments? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Or do I just say we adjourn? <laughs> Move to adjourn a second. Council Schwartz, Council Schwartz, Councilor Schwartz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We only went 20 minutes over.